All right. Hello, everybody. This is my uh, Mike Soul and Ultra Uberness. We gonna say anything, Ultra? Um, since you be. Uh, and there we go. So this is uh, Boost Fear. We'll start as soon as we hit go. This game is a continuation of Legacy of Goku 2. Uh, they changed quite a bit in this game. So to start off with, this game... Right, they didn't start the timer, my bad. Um, but it's fine. Um, in this game, they added a feature called uh, text canceling. If you notice how text boxes are popping up and disappearing immediately, it's because I'm canceling by spamming the B button. Um, this game it was created by a company called Webfoot. Uh, Webfoot is a U.S. company. So for those who live outside of the U.S. and Canada, this game was never released to outside of the U.S. So it's probably something you've never seen before. It's actually kind of bizarre because um, most animation games and games around like around this type of stuff go from japan out this goes from the u.s in out so legacy of goku 2 legacy of goku 1 those were all released in the u.s first versus you uh being the other way around uh with this type of speed run of boost fury it is kind of longer than the other two and it does have a lot more glitches and such so for example log 2 is very skill based um Ultra over here can tell you more about Log 2 since he's the better between the two of us. We want to discuss about Log 2. We're, we're playing Boost Fury. I'm going through all of it, Ultra. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, so Log 2 starts in a long time ago with Trunks, the history of Trunks. And uh, you start off as Trunks as a young kid who does not know how to become a Super Saiyan. And in the story... Uh, that's when you find Gohan died, and then you become Super Saiyan during the game. And then the, the game changes to uh, young Gohan. And then during that, you uh, you find out that you have a dream uh, that Frieza came back, and you fight the dream Frieza. So... And then... No, go ahead. Okay, so to, to start off, this game added a new system called the Equipment System. Equipment has different properties. So, for example, I just equipped something called Weighted Gear. Weighted Gear in this game will slow down the main character, but also gain XP gear. So, I'm getting more XP as I go through. So, for this like part, it's going to be a quick, pretty much a quick leveling section. I need to get to... There's a level door up ahead that's sick, level 65. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go to level 70. And the reason I'm going to level 70 is between the next time I play Goku, there's not going to be a really good area for XP. And his next level door is 70. So it's better to do the grind here versus uh, later. And if and you know about these games, there's always level doors. That's what stops you from progressing. That's kind of how it works. They make it so that you can explore the game and like do other things and level up. That's the whole gimmick behind the game itself. Yeah, it's it's in a, log two. It, it's 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 it shows up in log two. I think is the first game to have level doors, and then no, because log one has one, doesn't it? Tech. No, there's no doors. I thought I thought it was the uh, Raddus thing that had a level block on it. No, the guy just won't like open the door until you see if it's can't. Oh, that's right. <laughs> He's like, "Fuck you! I'm not gonna let you go fight that guy until you save my can't." Gotcha. And I think actually you have to actually you actually had to do the other missions too. The guy says that the town is suffering, so you have to like do all the missions, um, save the kid, get the can, to re rescue, get the flowers, and then the guy's like, "Oh, okay, yeah, you did all our missions, by the way. So I'm gonna open the door and teach you how to do solar flare." Gotcha. So Log Two is one of the ones I don't know as much about, but going back to it. The progression is blocked by level doors, and like I said, it'll show up later on to be a little painful because there's going to be grinding sections that I particularly wish we didn't have to do, but there ain't much to it, much to do other than to do it. Um, but as I was saying before, this game actually happens right after Log 2. So the max level in Log 2 is level 50, and you start this game pretty much right at level 50. So it's supposed to be a continuation of the of log two, in theory. And I want 
I want everybody in chat to let me know what they think. If you guys did play Legacy of Goku 2 and Blue's Fury, which music do you think is the best? Me and Mike Soul were kind of thinking opposites. So I think Blue's Fury is pretty better music than uh, Log 2. But Log 2 has good music too. And I'm a and I'm more of a fan of Log 2's soundtrack over Boost Fury. And by the way, yes, the this game is one of the few games uh, out of the Dragon Ball Z categories or series that actually uses the uh, Brooke Faulkner music or the English music. So I'm going to go into Instant Transmission here, which is one of the abilities that they carry in this game. So with Instant Transmission, there's a there's very unique properties to it. So that, I, uh, can I can probably... Oh, yeah, go ahead, man. Yeah, Sorry. so the, um, the, inst the unique properties of Instant Transmission is that you teleport to a target, and by doing this, you can actually skip things. So, for example, there was supposed to be a text box there, but I just completely skipped it by instant transmissioning. And, by, yes, by someone in chat, there is alpha versions of this game, and it actually plays completely different. Yeah. And uh, I, I I, could probably guess, I don't think it was confirmed, but I could probably guess why the, the alpha or the prototype would start at level 50. And this is kind of cool with the way that the three trios do. Is Legacy of Goku 1... The, the final level is 25 and um, as Goku, right? And at the end of the game, you get the last level as you defeat Frieza. And Legacy of Goku 2, you unlock Goku at like level like uh, 35, imp implying that he leveled up after, you know, came back, right? And the final level is level 50 in that game. That's the max level you could be. So I can see why like they in Legacy in Boo's Fury, the max level is 200. They didn't like reset levels. They progressed each character. And that's why when you unlock Vegeta, Goku, uh, the characters in Boo's Fury, it kind of reflects that they've leveled up further after those games. They also reused a lot of assets from Log 2 in this game and then kind of worked on a lot of them. So, um, for example, a few characters actually have similar attacks than they did in Log 2, but they also took attacks from characters from Log 2 and then transferred them to other people. Unfortunately, and this is where Boost Fury differs from all the other ones, you probably won't get to see any of those attacks. If anything, I'll probably avoid all specials because they do nothing. Because in this game, they added a new feature where every time you level up, you get bonus points. And you can put those bonus points into different stats. For the speed run, we put all our bonus points into strength and end, which is pretty much defense. Because the max amount of damage you can get out overall is, is punching. So we'll just put everything into strength so that our beam and Kai base attacks become completely worthless. I hate to say it. Um... And there's actually also a very unique property for that too, is that some boss fights in this game scale based on what stats you have. So for example, the final fight with Kid Buu, all of Kid Buu's stats are scaled based on what you chose. So for example, if I chose pure strength, that means Kid Buu's stat points would oh, just this, into this pure guy's strength. getting a crystal. This yeah, guy, we're gonna do the crystal guy, for safety because it's a marathon this run. Guy. That was the I want everybody to start booing Mike's soul right now for getting this crystal. <laughs> Boo this man. Boo this man for picking a safety strat during a marathon. Feels bad, man. Yeah, so... I need... In, in Legacy of Goku 2, there is there are no revives, but in Boo's Fury, because for some reason they thought this game might be harder... They gave you a uh, an item called the Lazarus Crystal, and the Lazarus Crystal allows you to revive once you die. So, it's just kind of funny to me. But yeah, this is uh, this is just the in like this is kind of like the first like I feel like the first like ten minutes of this game is. Uh, uh, the texting, first... moving around and trying to get to places, you know. Yeah, the first, pretty much the first twenty-five minutes is just kind of this, just running around. Um, 
Until you get to the tournament, that's when it really starts picking up. But uh, until then, it's just this. There is actually a dangerous spot coming up where you can die in the run. But like once you get past um, the tournament and then the few sections at the end, it's a pretty safe run. Uh, Boo's Fury is very consistent kind of with running. Uh, there is a lot of time saved by pure RNG because of the item drops. Like there's specific items that I would love to pick up, but they don't aren't guaranteed. So the big ones are uh, Demon Mask, uh, Reflective Gloves, and Sneakers. If I can get Sneakers, that'll carry us through us the, whole, the rest of the game. And the reason why is uh, any item that grants speed reduces the amount of speed you lose from Weighted Gear, and it also just makes the run much faster since it's very movement-based. Is that the only items? So you're okay with level 1... Uh, weighted, weighted gear, yeah. Gear. So better, better weighted gear also helps, but it's not really that big of a deal, honestly. Like unless it's ten ton, about. unless if you, get, if you get the ten, oh, wow. you, that that's, kind of, that's. I kind of just got debated by the airship there. That's funny. So we got this little time. It. I avoided it and it flew into me. So we will have to Please. do airships later because there's going to be an item that requires airships to be done, but it's actually but quite. You can't funny. get it now. No, you can't get it now. Bandana doesn't drop until Chapter 5. Yeah, Chapter 5. That I didn't know. I, I tried to get them early, so I did not know that you had to get, like, a certain chapter. Yeah, until you get to Dragon Ball section, they will not spawn. Interesting. I've actually messed around with what spawns at what chapters, so I have an idea of where everything spawns in the entire game. <laughs> So right now what we're doing is we're running towards uh, Capsule Corp. We're going to run to the back room and grab this capsule. This will allow us to get the Great Saiyan Man outfit, which is the next part of the story. Fun fact. Um, the Great Saiyan Man outfit is probably Gohan's greatest transformation in this game because it gives you a lot of the damage stats of Super Saiyan without losing the energy. The problem is you only get to wear it twice. Well, once. Cause so you... what you're saying, if you can control the Saiyan Man outfit, you would get the stats? Yes. So actually... after he comes back, after he comes back from Kai Planet, that would help you? Unfortunately, yes, but that's not a thing. And Bulma just respawned in front of me. That is something I've actually never seen before. <laughs> Did you see that's that? never happened before. You ever seen that? Like she just like went from behind me, immediately spawning in front of me to bonk in front of me. I, I I unfortunately have seen that before in my marathon once. So that's hilarious. <laughs> I also try to get her to glitch in the table, uh, but oh, I you, failed. Oh, you go every for time. the table glitch. Okay. Yeah, I try to get the table thing. Yeah, there's a there's a weird glitch where she can walk into the table and just get stuck there. Okay, so we're going to kill him because of story reasons. Actually, you can ignore him, but I'm actually killing him specifically to pick up any money he could drop. Because right now I need to pick up a little money so that way uh, when we hit the tournament, I can go ahead and buy um, uh, the leather shoes. Or leather slippers. Or, so that way that we can have some of this uh, weighted gear reduced speed down. So this is actually, the next part is um, Gohan grinding. Again, you're going to be able to seeing a lot of grinding in this game. Uh, the key here is kind of interesting because right here in this little section right here where the bank robbery is happening, you can actually die here. There's, several, there's a few ways of doing it. There's a safe way, a risky way, and then like what normal people, normal roamers would like to do. The risky way is faster, but most people don't do it. Since I'm running Lazarus Crystal, I'm going to do it a little bit normal way. So I'll go with him, kill him first, then you're going to run over here. Another feature I meant to forget to add, they add in this game, is block. So certain enemies have the ability to block. Oh, and I died. That's why it's risky. Well, I don't have Lazarus anymore. That's fun. 
that's an example of how, like, being risky there can actually kill you. The safest stride is to Kai blast your way through it. What you're saying is you need a cup of get good, then. I do is need that, a cup is of that get good. Saying? Gotcha. Yeah, so that means that Videl, I'm gonna have to actually play safe. So, if you walk down there, it's a cutscene that will trigger, but the developers, for some reason, did not think that a player would just walk up. So if you walk up, you can just skip this whole cutscene. All together, and just rock, run to the uh, end. I can't. By the way, you guys are probably watching a time capsule right now. This is pro if there is like any like new strats. This, Mike's soul is this. old. Yeah, I, I, I do know. all the older stuff. So, Mike's soul has been speed running like years ago. So like, there's some probably strats that he is like, cause he's just an old man now. So you gotta bear with them, you guys. Yeah, so right now I'm going to focus a little bit on this grind section because this is also another place you technically can die if you're bad so, like me. So uh, Mike Solo is saying you could die everywhere in this game. So that's, no, that's, that's log I'm getting two. This. Well, that is true. That is not incorrect, sir. Log 2, you I could wish die I anywhere. Were a carrot. I wish once I you, were a carrot. Once you get Sensu Bean, like, death really doesn't happen very often other than the final sections. Okay, so we're going to keep Super Saiyan here. I'm going to grab this money real quick. That should help a little bit. And we're going to grind the big guys for a minute. Okay, so... So now we're going to switch into the Great Saiyan Man outfit. And like I said, the stats carry over to Great Saiyan Man. So that way now we can implement our stats into Strength. So that way we do more damage. This is like the only time we really get to use Great Saiyaman's stats, the stat boost he gets from this outfit. Because after that, we never get to use this form ever again in the run. Time is not to go up there, son. So now we're going to grab this room for a minute. Oh, you grind this room. I grind yeah. the tanks. The tanks are way faster, man. Well, they are, but there's a reason I'm doing this. They have a higher. Those have a higher chance of dropping money. What do you need money for? Uh, leather boots. The leather, the leather uh, slippers at the tournament. You don't need that as long as you get sneakers. Yeah, that requ that would require me to get something that has a very low drop rate. Thanks. And, uh, if you guys believe, you know, press one in the chat that he'll Dude, get sneakers. If, if I get sneakers like I did during my practice run earlier, that would be hilarious to get it, like, that early twice. So, another thing in, uh, Great Saiyan outfit, you're not allowed, you cannot turn Super Saiyan while having this outfit in, so... Unfortunately, it's not going to really help us there. So I think I'm at, what, A64? So 64 should be fine. I'll rotate down. This will give us 65. And now we have reached the next level door. So at this point, none of these guys matter anymore. Take down. I'm trying to give you... I'm giving you good luck over here, Mike. So I'm listening to uh, someone sing Hey Chala nine different times at the same time. Nice. No, wait, nine different hey, times. Chala. So wait, that means you have nine different streams or are they just singing it nine times no if, if we it's a certain rabbit that she's singing oh, okay I, I got it I, no, I got you i got you i got you i know exactly what video you were talking about too <laughs> she's singing nine different times nine and different... it's so and it's so it's so consistent too gotcha so story-wise we saved the dinosaur videl's mad at us because they thought we stole it giant dinosaurs show up Videl realizes we didn't steal it. You know, Dragon Ball no, we stuff. Didn't steal it. No, we definitely steal it. My, like, his his reasoning was that he doesn't think that dinosaurs should be in ca captivity. We definitely stole an animal, for sure. No, we set it free. You know? We set it we set free. It, we still, we still stole it, so. No, the only no. reason why Videl was okay with it, because the thing that's flying above it starts to show up and is, like, humongous. So, we set it she's free. Like, oh, There's wait a, a difference. <laughs> we still stole it, you know. <laughs> we're pretty much Robin Hood at this point. We stole from the rich and gave it away, you know? You know what? I'll take that one. 
So now we're gonna fly back to the uh, back to the Go uh, Goku house, our house. I was that, and this will trigger the next portion of the game, where well, the next chapter, which will where have you to get do. to uh, fight uh, Goten, your favorite part, right? Uh, yeah. So here's the thing. Who likes rock throwing contests? Let's go. So here's the thing. Goten is a pain because of the rock a throwing champ. contest. It is RNG where he throws it, and more often than not, he can predict where you're going to go and hit you. It's really bizarre. Almost every runner of this game has an issue with this one mini game. The fight, the boss fight afterwards is a joke, but up to it isn't. So at this point, after like I said, after 20 minutes, the game actually starts picking up and you actually start doing stuff. So this is, uh, by the way, this is from Janimba the movie. So this does have movie game char uh, characters in it, movie game boss fights. How many movie characters are in this one, Mike Soul? Uh, two. There were supposed to be more. Actually, that's actually why uh, in the beta they were originally supposed to have four. No, yeah, four boss fights from movies. One being Broly, one being Android 17. Uh, yeah, 17, Broly, and Bio Broly, and then Janimba. You said Android 17. Did you mean somebody else? Uh, the 16? It might be 16. No, 16 is the big uh, orange head yeah, so, uh, uh, No, it would be the 15, wouldn't it? The, the trucker guy. You're talking about the trucker hat guy? Yeah. My trucker hat. So as you saw there, he predicted that I was going to walk Android back, 13. and he just threw it right on top of me. And he's hitting me again. Oh my god, this is the Go 10 minigame. I hate it. Bio Broly? That just sounds terrible. That was the worst Broly of them all, man. Bio Broly didn't even make any sense. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Look at me and my trucker hat. Yeah, it was 13. Supposedly Android, 8, thir uh, supposedly Android 13 is supposed to be uh, what Dr. Jero looked like when he was young, apparently. So, um, you know, do with that information with what <laughs> do you what will. Do what you will, you know? yeah. So this is uh, actually another mini game where you're supposed to hit Vegeta or chase him around the room and hit Vegeta. But if your timing is good and uh, correct, you can actually hit him on the first frame. And we'll make sure do it, you guys. Find out next time. Okay, so, I hit him on the, so I hit him on the first train. Uh, first train. First screen. Train? <laughs> I am butchering my commentary. Let's go. When I, I need you guys to know Mike still has a master's in English. So I do not. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so I hit him on the first frame. So what happens is uh, after the second frame, he'll immediately start running towards the wall, and you have to chase him. But if you spam A in the rhythmic matter, or uh, rhythmic... If you spam A, you'll hit him. And now we're on our way to the tournament. Yeah, so now we're on our way to the tournament. And we get to, fight, and we get to beat up ten children. Let's go. In block two, we save children. In this game, okay, we, we beat, beat them up. Them up. <laughs> That's save the children just so just we can beat, beat them up, up later, later, you guys. Yep, that is law. That is the legacy of Goku series in a nutshell. Oh my lord, I'm choking. That's uh, you know, hey, ain't nothing new there, is there? I mean, that's how speed runs for you will tend to go, man. You know. Dang, call me out on it, don't you? There's a reason why you still don't have a sub two hours in log two, man. Yeah, so we're gonna buy these leather moccasins, and um, using these, we'll be able to reduce the uh, the amount of speed loss we get from a weighted gear. And like I said, it helps overall. And like I said, like Ultra said, if I got sneakers, it wouldn't matter about buying these. But sneakers are such a very low drop that you can't really guarantee that you'll have them every time. Um, no. Another thing. That's Go ahead. I was gonna say, I swear, even I've done when I done my marathon ones, I swear I got them like one every ten runs. Yeah, they're pretty bad uh, drop rate, but 
So, fun fact, for this minigame, you can actually destroy this punching machine. It's actually slower to destroy this punching machine, so we're not going to destroy it. It adds a few frames of animation, which actually you have to wait to be finished on. But if you're like me, I purposely destroy it, because it's funny. It is funny. Um, another thing uh, about specifically this room, so there are technically two official versions of this game. There's the official release, and then the, the two-in-one card. The two-in-one cart actually came, comes out much later uh, during this life cycle of the GBA, but it's actually the most earliest official version of Booze Fury. So in that room where all of the people are, or all the participants are standing, the guy to trigger the next part of the tournament actually stands at the door instead of standing right next to you. So the two-in-one cart, so far from what I know, is slower than the uh, first official release even though it's technically an earlier version. There are very unique aspects of this game that happen, so certain things only spawn during chapters. So each chapter actually is a whole new unique load. And a while back we found out that it is possible to go back chapters. Um, there was a run with one of our runners before where they made it all the way to Super Boo fight and before they got there they noticed somehow Fat Boo respawned onto the uh, onto the level. They went back and was able to jump back from chapter 10 to chapter 6. And they had to redo all of it because of it. We're gonna put our points in. And this is where we beat up the children, especially this one, number five. He was so arrogant, even in the in the show. show it was yeah. fine. I don't understand. That was such a goof. Like there was like a, like, and they're the reasons why that like Bobbity knew where Capsule Corp was. Yeah. They're like, hey, by the way, uh, go kill them. What kind of mom? Holy crap, woman! Like you're gonna tell them to go kill people <laughs> because they beat up your kid in a tournament? That what was a, a fighting tournament of all things. What a rough situation, Jesus. Oh yeah, I also meant to... So these guy, these kids with the blue hat actually do not have a damage animation, so what they did is they made them turn around, which means they're the only in, one of the only enemies in this entire game that if you punch, they can immediately retaliate and punch back. Because they have no da like stun animation. So what you're saying is you can hit them every frame. You actually can hit them every frame. It is actually possible. They're the only enemy in the game that can probably be hit every frame. So when, when are you going to hit them every frame? Unfortunately, uh, I cannot do that with Trunks. Trunks does not have a way. Yeah, Trunks does not have a way to hit him every frame. If you were Goten, you could, but not uh, Trunks. So just like the Vegeta minigame, this is also another fight where uh, you can one frame punch him. So we're gonna we're gonna be fighting Hercule for the World Championship Finals, and we're just going to one tap him. And fu oh, he hit me first! Wow, he hit me on the one frame. <laughs> yeah, he can also. Like I like how that happens because that's that's not just uh, strict to uh, Boost Fury. Legacy of Goku 2 has that problem, and I believe Log 1 does too. The game, based on from my understanding, in Log 2 at least, the game reads on enemies if it can hit you or not every frame. And it'll decide whether or not to hit you, or if it doesn't. That's why if you, if there's like times where you feel like, oh, I ran past an enemy, I went right through the hitbox, did not get punched, or you barely approached their hitbox and they punched you. Because the game reads every frame whether or not to do it or to hit you or not. It's 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 crazy in how it reads that. And if you're just really unlucky, know. it just ends you in log two. Yeah, it can. Like I said, boost fury That's why has just, less like, of man. that issue. So this is uh Videl versus Popovich. This is actually the hard one of the hardest fights in the game funny enough. It's not really that hard of a fight, but it can catch you off guard and kill you.
Alright, so we're going to immediately jump from that to another thing, so I need to pay close attention here. Alright. So now I'm going to punch him upwards. You would actually kill him faster if you put him into the wall, but because of this specific unique cutscene where Videl has to run all the way to the right and up, Depending on where you end the fight, she has to run in different directions. So I kind of want her at the middle of the uh, arena and towards the right. That way she has to run the least. If you have her all the way up at the top, she'll run up and then run all the way down. So... And like, so oh god, my bad. I thought you were and like, the end point actually also changes by where you are too. So it could be a longer distance or it could be a shorter distance. I've just noticed that specific area has one of the shorter distances out of all of them. There's actually a shorter one, but unfortunately, Spopovich was not in a position I could get him there in time. So now we're going to go grab a Sensu Bean for Videl. So this is the most well-known glitch in this game. We're going to do what we call Sensu Bean Glitch. What's going to happen is I'm going to consume the Sensu Bean and pretty much empty out my inventory. That way, when they pull the Sensu Bean out of my inventory, they'll pull, instead of pulling nothing, they'll pull the max amount of sensu beans I can hold. So I know we were talking about this earlier. Um, someone mentioned in the chat there. Uh, apparently speed... You were mentioning this earlier. Speed does affect attack speed? Okay, so... One of our runners looked into earlier forum posts for this game. And apparently during the development cycle, at some point, they wanted uh, the speed stat to affect attack speed. Unfortunately, it's not the way the game works in the final version, but at some point in development, if you built your speed up, you were able to attack faster with punches, which is kind of hilarious to me because you can only mash so fast, so they'd have to, like, nerf punches in general. It was just a small little thing that was, like, posted a while back. That would be crazy. That'd make the whole game completely different than what it is. Alright, so we talked to Gohan. Now remember, we have completely wiped our inventory of food items. And because of that, now we have 255 sensu beans. Which will be kind of necessary for the run, because we're going to spend this whole run at, at, in Super Saiyan as much as we can. There are going to be a few sections where we won't be in Super Saiyan, but those are going to be mostly Gohan sections. Wait, he's the Golden Warrior and the Great Saiyan Man? I know, right? What a spoiler. What a twist! So, um... Uh, you would think that, but we're not gonna use Super Saiyan 3 that much because the bar drains way too fast. Uh, Meaning you have to go on the menu too often. Yeah, to do you'd have to go to the menu and since being way more often than necessary. So since so Super Saiyan three isn't is used more for grinding and stuff and some fights, but outside of that, we won't normally use Super Saiyan three unless we absolutely need to. Appreciate all the good luck in chat. Yeah, so the, the developers of this game's uh, log two and also as well. They purposely make certain things that they know in the series was uh, considered um, powerful, but with a huge drawback. So the Super Saiyan three is not the only one that they've done that to. The other one that's most common is Legacy of Goku two, where when you are after the hyperbolic time chamber, where you it was Vegeta and Trunks come out, uh, your Super Saiyan is nerfed. You gain a huge boost in attack. But your speed is cut in half. They purposely actually like mod like um uh, like made it so it, it duplicates what happened in the show. So Super Saiyan drains Super Saiyan three drains too quickly, and that's a reference to the fact that like, Goku says it takes too much energy out of him, and it takes too long for him uh, to stay in that form. All right. So 
we're gonna do a quick glitch that I think I'm still one of the only people who still do, and this is called Saiyan Storage, or Super Saiyan Storage. So because this level door is Goku's 70, we're gonna switch to Goku, turn Super Saiyan, break the door, run back down, switch back to Gohan, and what's gonna happen is they're gonna store this Super Saiyan for Goku until the next time I use him for this chapter. Um, this glitch is kind of finicky, where it's like, um, certain places it will let you store it, and then other times it won't. This chapter particularly will allow you to let you store Super Saiyan for any of the characters who have it. I didn't even know that was a glitch. I remember as a kid, I used to do this all the time. I was trying yeah, to get everybody to Super Saiyan. Yeah, it's not supposed to do that, by the way, because like, in some chapters, it just won't let you do it at all. And one, Demon Mask has dropped. So we've got one item already. That's wonderful. At least I have Demon Mask. So this is another Gohan grinding section. We're going to be grinding him up to 85. Eighty-five is it because of a door or it's because a of box? a level door? Yeah, it's a level door. Sorry. Gotcha. I got kind of caught up watching an enemy block three times. So in this game, uh, they added block, but they never really finish blocked properly, so it's not programmed right. So it blocks the damage up front of it, but if you change the direction and punch in a different direction, you bypass block. So in this game, there's. There are several ways to do bosses and stuff, and one of the big issues with fights up against bosses is that when you crit somebody, uh, you send them flying, versus log 2, when you crit someone, you just do big damage. So in this game, you don't want to crit at all. If if you can avoid critting at, any, at all, it helps so much and makes the run so much faster. While in log 2, you kind of hope for crits. It makes it feel like you're actually doing super, like, really super strain punch when you crit and you send them flying across the room. But for a speedrun purpose, it's just a real pain. And then they added block, which is another annoying mechanic, where in a speedrun we never use. And it reduces the damage by significant numbers. So if you notice that I'm punching them for, like, 790 or whatever, when they block, it only blocks for, uh, it brings that damage down to 80. So it reduces it tremendously. And to bypass this, and especially against boss fights, is we're going to put them in a certain... You're going to be, like, kind of in their hitbox, where no matter which angle which angle you're facing, you can hit them, and we're going to keep swapping from angle to angle to just bypass the block. It's so a what you're saying is when you block forward, just punch them in the back. Yep. And this is actually a strat that Log 2 uses heavily. Even and I'm though, the one that made it. Yep. You were the one that made it. We just brought it so, over to Blue's Fury because it was a lot more, a lot more intuitive in Blue's Fury. I a long, long time ago, I was having struggles with like the fights, and we so back in the day, you would punch enemies and have them bounce off the wall. That was the easiest and most consistent way. Um, but when it comes to that, that's obviously slow because you have to wait for because when they hit the the wall, they gain iframes. Um, and it's actually kind of similar in Boost Fury. That's because well, that's why it sucks when you launch them. When they hit a wall, for some reason, it, extend, it extends iframes. And so what ends up happening is you you want to get inside the hitbox of enemies and you just start punching up and down half the time. Because if you punch down, they move down, but then you punch up at the same, you know, like a frame or two later, and they go upwards. So it keeps their momentum in the same kind of frame. Now, unfortunately, Log 2 and Boost Fury have this problem where that's actually relatively random on how far they launch backwards. Uh, you can crit someone in Boost Fury and it doesn't always like launch across the screen. So it's like one of those things where it's like how the recoil works is it's not consistent, unfortunately. Yeah, sometimes it'll send them falling back just like maybe two steps and sometimes <clears throat> they'll, they'll go straight to the wall. And like it, but yeah, it's rough. That's why you kind of want to put them uh, as close to the wall as possible. Like, the old strat was to put him into a wall. That way, if you did crit, it didn't matter. But 
then you still had to deal with the blocks, and sometimes when you put them in certain walls, it's kind of hard to get in their back, their back hitbox. So we just put them close to the wall now. Okay, one more cycle of this room, and we should be able to move on. This one is level 85, and then we immediately move on. So now we're going to run up to the Deborah cutscene, where he's going to turn Piccolo and Krillin to stone. This really doesn't have anything to do with the run, it's just really interesting how they animated this. So for this next portion, uh, I'll have Ultra explain it, because I kind of want to focus on it. Because this is like one of the parts where I kind of need to pay attention to what level and what stats I have. There's not really much to explain. You're, I mean, it's Bobbity ship. So like they, they, I love this part, by the way. I love when games elaborate on something more than the anime did. Um, Bobbity ship is, because you knew in the story that there was like levels. And for some reason, they never had to progress. Like for some reason, Bobbity ship is literally an elevator, right? Um, they just go from one level to the next and fight the next boss for some reason. But in this game, you can actually fight and and navigate the entire ship. And from my memory, uh, Mike Solo will you know correct me, of course. But <clears throat> the first two sections um, of the game, you want to fight as Goku uh, to gain uh, some levels. And the main reason for memory is that you're doing it to help the fight against Vegeta. Um, Vegeta, and then the fight before it. So, well, yeah, so it's it's because Vegeta's the last one, so, like, you're aiming to help fight against Majin Vegeta. And then the third level is what you'd use Vegeta to level up because there is a door that is going to be required of him. Um, and, I, and I believe that's actually the last time Vegeta levels up in the game. Um, no, there's a, like there's a there's a 100 door. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, HFIL. So... Um, I, for some reason, always keep thinking Vegeta's always level 80, but he's actually stuck at level 100. But it's, it's not much of a difference, um, because Vegeta sucks. So, I mean, shout out to all Vegeta fans, but he's a terrible, you know, fighter. So, I mean... We're really hey, doing that you know, right now, how, huh? <clears throat> that's how it would be, you know. Um, but, no, when it comes to the, the game itself, it he kind of got the Gohan treatment in the sense of that he was forgotten with the way... He, the story progresses if you know log legacy of goku 2 um for <laughs> i don't know what happened in legacy of goku 2 but they never because the story never uses gohan there is no gohan doors in legacy of goku 2 so you can literally have gohan never used the entire game and for some reason they expect you to have gohan leveled up to fight perfect cell uh it kind of stems the same way with vegeta in this game there is a few doors. The last one is the level 100 because HFIL is a part of the movie and he was involved. But the level 100 is the last one. Like, that's the only one. Um, I'm talking about the story-wise uh, with Gohan. But when it comes to... Uh, well, there is a level 15 door for Gohan and that's for a stupid uh, capsule. But other than that, when it comes to Vegeta... Um, yeah, it's it's mainly just get him to the level and then just never use him because Goku's there. Uh, uh, pretty much. Heads up, by the way, for that boss fight, the fan the creators of this game were such Dragon Ball Z nerds. They wanted to get it as close as they possibly could to how the story was. Is which is why that boss fight dies in one hit. <laughs> like like we said, women, we we said that a few times. They they are very big fans and they purposely uh, duplicated scenarios on purpose. Like there's games that they don't, they wouldn't have done, they wouldn't have done that. There, I've seen Bodokai, that guy, you actually have to legit fight him, right? Yeah. In this game, they purposely, like they were like, yeah, that Vegeta obliterated that dude. So like they're not gonna have you fight him and everything. So I think the guy, I don't, I don't remember the HP, but I remember it being like in the hundreds. It doesn't. Yeah, have it's any like a hundred and ten. Oh my god, reflective gloves. Let's go. Um. Now we need a, all we need is sneakers, and we have the Trinity. Of early game yeah it's funny that you mentioned that uh trunks gets uh, like that it, trunks uh actually is the one stuck at level 80. his last yep. door is a level 80 door goten is the one that gets a level 100 
So funny enough, Goten and Vegeta are the same level by the end of the game, generally. Um, fun, fun fact, uh, Trunks, if normally done without going over-leveling, will end the game at level 82. Because of the two level-ups from Gotenks. Oh, uh, that'll automatic, automatically happen with uh, the Boo fights. Yep. So... Um, that's. I feel like there's a difference with that one in this game. Uh, there is a relative ceiling cap in this game. Uh, you can over level, like you can level up from you know zero to one hundred and actually gain a bar into the next level. Um, but in Legacy of Goku two, they cap XP at certain rates. You can't just gain levels. Um, so like it's really it's 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 really fun and just different with how they they help with certain things and then give you certain things to do in Boost Fury uh, to kind of make it more fun with the way that you do the fighting and just progression. Um, and there's a lot of more in Boost Fury, there's a lot more uh, new game plus kind of stuff to do. So like you can figure out more collectibles, there's more capsule, there's just more stuff. So it's just, it's really cool on how they did everything and just duplicated certain fights. Now, obviously they couldn't duplicate this fight, Yakan, because the real fight would have been a pure darkness and have fun with that in a video game. So, um, the only way they would have been able to duplicate that is if you, it turned Super Saiyan and it lit up the area. So, but now we're gonna switch to Vegeta um, because uh, Vegeta needs some levels. And you know how it is. He has to catch up to Kakarot every time. So, um, so yeah, by I the did way, hear about half the, half the locations get cut in the game. So, I mean, that makes sense, depending on limitations or what they're trying to do. By the way, um, if you're wondering why my bar is showing as it's Super Saiyan, even though it doesn't, this game has an issue of like memory-wise. So even if I drain all my energy right now, it'll still show that I have a full bar of Super Saiyan because. It just forgot it was a Super Saiyan at one point. Why aren't you going Super Saiyan as Vegeta? I, I, my, my meter wasn't all the way up. Oh. Right, and, and that makes sense, because uh, after you uh, do the Kai planet with Gohan, I've had it before where I had a full bar, and I could no longer see that thing anymore. Yep. Because uh, Gohan can't go Super Saiyan anymore. Gotta yep. love realism, right? Right, you guys? They made it sound like he couldn't go Super Saiyan ever again. Um, but there was no Mystic form, which I feel like is a little bit of a mishap because they made Legacy of Goku 2. They gave uh, Super Namekian um, a power-up form, which wasn't really a power-up form. That was just Piccolo. There's no energy drain. So that wasn't correct. But, you know, if there was a Mystic form, that would have been cool, you know? Um, but hey, you know, gotta, you know, sometimes things happen, you know? Well, like, in, so. in Mystic, and like I said, I'll go over it again once we get to that part of the game, but uh, in Mystic form, in this game, what they did was they got rid of Super Saiyan, but gave you a bunch of extra stat points to put points into, which, cool, casually, but for a speedrun, we already reached the max amount of strength cap way beforehand, so it really just hurts. Like, I, it can't even... Shield. It won its endured endurance. But we don't even need that much endurance either. It's the kind of the fun part. So it's like it doesn't matter. You meet you meet the max cap evasion of shield. Uh, I mean uh, endurance and strength. So it's like not even a big deal. Yeah, post game would be cool if you could go great Saiyan man because he did actually continue being the great Saiyan man. Um, but for the speed run, it would have been cooler if he if you could have transformed at some point. Um, because then. After Mystic Gohan, um, we wouldn't be pissed about losing Super Saiyan anymore. Because as we explained, Great Saiyan Man keeps a lot of the Super Saiyan strength. So, um, which is actually funny because it was actually, it was in the show that the, the helmet was supposed to help hide Gohan's golden hair. So, um, that helmet's stronger than Super Saiyan, you guys. Just saying. Yep. Wrath of Dragon would have been interesting. I would love if uh, if uh, there was like a. I, I'm not the biggest super fan, but I would love to see if there was like a continuation. Like the company's like I think I mean Mike still figured it out that the company's gone. It would have to be made by a new company. But uh, if we can get other G like kind of a GBS kind of thing kind of going on, 
um, of like maybe super or you know GT, like uh, you know that would be kind of cool. Yeah, and I web, swear, if, you know, if, if someone because the oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I'll just say if someone mentions GT transformations, uh, that's it. You're out. I was about just about to do that actually. I know you were. <laughs> that's why you were cutting me off. So Webfoot's last game they developed was GT Transformations, which was a side-scroll beat-em-up for GT. It was also supposed to continue be the continuation of this game. They, they for some reason, decided to switch it from an action RPG to a side-scroll beat-em-up. It's actually not a bad game. Um, Light. It's not amazingly good either. It's it's okay. Um, it has its problems. Like, the main issue that it pops in my mind is the taller the character is, the worse they are. The smaller the character are, the better they are. Yeah, they kept, they try to keep the Legacy of Goku um, title. I don't know. I forgot what happened. Someone probably can tell me in the chat In development, something. and like I said, from, ta from one of our runners getting contact with the developer of this game, of these games, GT Transformation was actually going to be called Log 4. What happened to Boost Fury though? Because you guys, I thought you guys found out like why it was they also lost, like, its 3. development name was Log Three. <laughs> well, why did they why did they change it? Uh, that I don't know. Like, uh, I don't know why I went back here. I don't either. Yeah, Log Legacy of Goku Ford in development. Yep. Mike Soul missing the key. Kind of got, this is Mike Soul like missing the key in Legacy of Goku 2, you guys. Every time I talk about GT transformation, I always like lose track of where I am. I don't know what it is with that game. I gotta stop bringing it up, man. I Future Shock. That sounds kind of cool. Um, I mean, I don't mind Legacy of Goku 2, you know. The uh, the, 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 it should. This is. Uh, I, I have found out over the years that many people have experienced Legacy of Goku 2 and Boost Fury. And I was like, okay, why is it no one else playing this game? <laughs> um, but. Being called Fuji. Oh, really? I didn't know. I don't know anything about Terminator stuff, so that's not me. Um, but yeah, when it comes to this game. Uh, oh, that's right. There's a stupid uh, plugin at the top. Uh, that's right. I was like, Where, Mike Soul's leaving, you guys. He's supposed to go and fight Tabura. Yeah, but, I got to do the, uh, the, the plugins at the top rooms. Because you have to go all the way down, grab those plugs, and come all the way back up. Yep. So, um, but as you can see, Mike Soul should be holding, or he should be equipped with the um, XP items. I actually have not been paying attention to the drops. I haven't seen anything besides the mask. Uh, uh, we've got reflective we gloves and demon mask. We should have gotten sneakers in this room, actually, you guys. But it's, right now, we can get sneakers in this area. Actually, this is this area has the lowest chance of sneakers. I have gotten it twice in this area. You are very lucky, then. So, so when it comes to this area, you can get it. It's still, but obviously, you as a speed run, you can't just sit there and wail on enemies. It just takes longer. So, um, that's why the rates are so bad. Is because in in the speed run, you are killing a lot of like simple enemies and so like it's very few uh, enemies that you will the biggest time people get sneakers is going to be during dragon balls apparently that's going to be the biggest one and kazoo because yep, so. that's when you kill the most enemies in the game that actually have um, good drop rates legacy of goku one is difficult because the way it was designed is that uh it was like a punch for punch kind of game and if you punched an enemy or they, they punched you you either died or was like already critical health. So that's why Legacy of Goku 1 gets a bad rep. I get it. It was, I I don't know how many people were wow. working on that game. I think it was like six people. But um, that's why I, I think they put a code in so that you had invincibility. <laughs> um, I think that's why. And the other one is obviously just Kai Blast from a distance. So, yeah, when it comes to Boost Fury. So at some uh, point, Gohan lost his his great salmon outfit I, I don't know why but it's now just a pure black suit so enjoy dragon ball is the longest chapter funny enough without like a lot of these detours and like uh, uh gates and the doors uh the game would be over in, a, in an hour uh, uh it'd be an, i think like an hour and 20 minutes or something so uh, that's why that's why I know they put in the the movie stuff because it gave it more um, content because Dragon Ball Boo's 
Busaka is relatively straightforward. There was no progression. There was no like, it was just, all right, let's go straight to Boo. Boo killed us. All right, let's go to Kai Planet. And you know, it was just more straightforward things. So there was no like, let's go to this area. We gotta, we gotta follow, get, we gotta track down, you know, Jero. There was no like that. So it was like, it, it, the, the best, the best example I can give is in the game Dragon Ball Kakarot. The thing tells you, hey, by the way, you're gonna be locked in for the rest of the game. By the way, um, because it just goes straight to it, which is why I love this. We love this game because it does have a lot of content with the movie stuff, like HFIL. Um, trying to like incorporate like the Kai planets and stuff, so it's just one of those things where it's one step at a time with that. So the Goku and Vegeta fight kind of split between like every one fourth of his health. There's a, a cutscene. It's just gonna kind of get him back and forth like this for a minute. Um. Heads up, if, if you are listening to this with headphones, you are going to want to turn it down until after the Vegeta fight. This is this is my one and only warning for you. Oh, you tell people about that? I tell them it gets quiet and had, you have to turn it up. I'd, I'd like them to enjoy their trip on this marathon, please. No, screw that. What city was supposed to be bigger? I wish it was bigger. I wish it was the size of, like, uh... Uh... Legacy Goku 2. And like and, and some like small mini quests too. Legacy of Goku 2 West City has like a lot of small mini quests, like the the um apartment stuff and everything, so it would have been kinda cool if they had that, you know. West City being bigger and Hercule City being bigger. Um but hey, you can only do so much for GBA, right? So You used to be able to fly in West City? That's interesting. Why only West City? It seems kinda weird. Beta versions, man. Alpha versions, you never know. Ah, uh, I mean, when it comes to like Boost Fury, it's it's that there was definitely work in progress, and they did really well. I think they did great at this game. I I mean, there's always pluses and every and plus and minuses to every you know build that people do. So I never um, think about it too much because. All right, for those who have headphones, you can turn it back up now. Like that that Kamehameha noise is unbelievably loud in, on every versions, and I don't know why they chose that sound effect. Because it's fun. Yes, ear bleeding is fun. Yes, yes. So now we're doing like the Vegeta section. What are you talking about? Yeah, true. Uh, so now we're gonna equip the uh, reflective gloves, and we're gonna click Demon Mass. I want you to uh, pay attention that my strength is exactly level 84. Now, oh well, my strength is 84, and to one cycle boo you need uh to for sure spot one cycle boo you need to be at least 84 strength or higher uh 83 actually but if you can have that kind of strength i can almost guarantee one cycle fat boo here uh you can also do it at 81 but it is very very rare and it's it all depends on if boo's first few hits aren't blocked for him sitting in guard uh, so the zoom in is because of the boots. The other thing you might want to pay attention to is that you notice that um, Mr. Vegeta's Super Saiyan isn't running out because apparently the Majin build that gives you just infinite Super Saiyan. You can, uh, fun fact, you can actually get out of Super Saiyan here too. Yeah, and that will re-trigger the whole like going back in and out of it too. Yeah, it, it's a weird bug. You can actually you can actually get stuck doing that too. If you run out at the same time you go into a flight pad, it just infinitely puts you in like in and out of Super Saiyan. I don't know why. But yeah, this is like a part where uh, it, it gets kind of critical, and this is kind of like the like kind of like the first boss fight. You kind of have to like really like get things because if you because especially speed running, you want to make sure you kill Boo fast enough because. Otherwise, you have to kill Bobbity or knock him out again. It's just annoying. Um, so. They made Dabura big. I like, I love the big enemies. I'm going to tell you guys right now. When it comes to, they got bigger hitboxes and you can chain them better. It's crazy. So. Now, none of that sell juniors. Like, seriously, get that crap out of here. Yeah, so. One cycle. 
We actually had a bad start for that because Boo tank like blocked the first two hits, but we were able to just ease right through it because of level 84. Just put him into the Hands wall. Hands up, everybody. Him. Hands up, everybody. Everybody's favorite. All Vegeta fans love this scene. So, uh, uh, If you are a fan know. of Vegeta, uh, this is your favorite scene. Enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, put a Boo. one in chat. Yep. If you're a Vegeta fan, put a one in chat, I guess. So I uh, and later. for the restreamers, um, uh, same thing. If you can get a one spamming through the chat for the scene, uh, we can appreciate it. I bet the JP stream is losing it right now. Why they talk? They do they re-talk everything you're saying? Yeah, uh, they try to. Nah, uh, there must be a lot of Vegeta fans. I'm with Akira Toriyama. Vegeta's the worst one of them all, so. He's the one that helps Cell become perfect. You know, he's the one that always got something to prove. You just ruined it to just, say, you know, you're doing this you on know. purpose. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe he should have taken Cell's advice and wait like the rest of them and wait for Goku. You know, just Ooh. saying, you know. <laughs> Vegeta, no! Vegeta, yes! And so ends a proud Saiyan warrior. His name was Vegeta. I think. <laughs> Who? Me, my son, or my planet? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it didn't work. Who would have guessed? I also kind of thought this was kind of like a big, it really was a big fuck you to Vegeta because he technically did exactly what the spirit bomb did. So I thought it was actually kind of funny that for some reason, uh, him like with that huge energy blast that we all saw did not shred Boo to pieces and somehow the smoke allowed him to come back and everything. And you're just like, because he did it again also with Gotenks. And you're just like, Okay, that's just ridiculous. Even, like, the particles? Like, what's going on? <laughs> and somehow the spirit bomb is the one that disintegrates him. Oh, fantastic. That's good to know. You know? Of course. I did, I did think win. that was kind of funny. Yeah. So, now we're at the longest chapter in the game. Chapter 6 is known as the Dragon Ball Collection chapter. Um, there's going to be very unique ways I'm going to do this. So, to start off, we're going to immediately get Goten and I'm going to get him these boots. That way we can have some movement speed. Well, my soul, if you got to collect Dragon Balls, does that mean you have to collect the Radar 2 to find out where they're at? So, unlike Log 2, you do not need the Dragon Radar in this in this run at all. So, if you notice on the map, it's showing a star telling me to go to West City to collect the Dragon Radar. We're going to ignore that, because as soon as you hit Chapter 6, the Dragon Balls, well, they're already spawned in the map anyway. They're spawned at Chapter 1. But we can now play the characters to get to the Dragon Balls, so... We're gonna go into the airship first. What thing, first thing we're gonna do in the airship is we're going to... Level up Trunks and Goten. The way this is going to work is we're going to go Trunks up and Goten down. The reason why is Trunks does not require a, a, a level door past 80. Goten has a level 100 level door. So we'll have to focus more on Goten than anything. So we'll most likely get go uh, Trunks here... 80 or higher before we leave this airship. So I'm gonna be honest, this is my favorite part of the game. I love Goten, so yeah, Goten's actually one of the mo one of the better characters to play in this game, especially so in the Frieza alpha was build. Actually gonna, Frieza was actually gonna die to the spirit bomb. He actually just miraculously survived. He actually says that he was about to die. Uh, he actually has no idea how he lived. <laughs> But well, the Dragon Ball chapter is really fun. Um, it has the most explora exploration. It, it's kind of it's the, actually the first part of the game that actually lets you know other areas and it actually gives you access, by the way, uh, of areas that you want to explore in the map. Uh, obviously, not everything revolves around Goku, Vegeta, and Piccolo, and everybody else. Uh, there's other crap going on, so like that's why you'll explore like a pyramid, you'll explore uh, Ninja Fortress, you'll explore a lot of cool areas, and I think that's what I like about these kind of games. Is that there's other aspects of the, of video games, uh, and the Dragon Ball Z world that is more emphasis in this kind of game or Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, because it's like, hey, there's other things that are happening, um, and then you can kind of progress and take a look and, and kind of help out in the area. 
This is also the introduction to one of the worst enemies in the game. Would you like to say would you like to say who they are, Ultra? The bone guys? The ball guys. Oh the ball ones. Yeah, the ball guys yeah, are the worst the enemy in the game. So the reason they're the worst enemy in the game is because they have a weird coding in them where if they smack you three times, they will transform into their ball mode, which will do actually pretty good damage, and you cannot hit them. The best you could do is run away from them, uh, or Kamehameha them so they stay away from you. But they will come out of it, but it's just, it, it, the, it the takes... downside is, one, it takes forever. Two, you didn't want that to begin with because they actually have notoriously the highest XP you can get. Um, so... It's just one of those things that they are annoying in the sense if that they, they do hit you three times. But if you kill them, you just feel empowered. You always, every time, you're just like, ha, take that sucker. Um, so it's just, you know, when it comes to those guys, you'll see them more. They got different colors later on. Uh, the most evil one is at the end of the game. So you'll see more the of them at the final boss. End. Yeah. Um,. Podcorp would be interesting to hear because you only saw Podcorp once, and that was in Legacy of Goku 2. Um, for anybody who actually played that game casually, uh, there was actually a mention of Podcorp, the, uh, the opposite of Capsule Corp. So imagine, imagine um, like Capsule Corp is like, okay, let's let, let's do someone current, like Amazon, right? And then there's someone minor who's trying to compete with that. I mean minor, by the way, like some like dude who's trying to compete and they're failing because like capsule corp is making technology way faster and everything in legacy of goku 2 there was a mini mission where the security guard tells you that there's an imposter among us and you have to figure out who it is and you found out it was a guy a scientist who was trying to steal uh technology and that would have been kind of cool if this ship was supposed to be something like that where pod corp was incorporated incorporated with like thieves but i mean hey you know that would have been more details i feel like that would have like just gone over people's head at gba you know uh, to answer a question that someone posted in chat uh yes endurance really does matter on the final grind because of the ball guy he will destroy you and the answer to the other one pow is energy blasts and which is completely useless in this game and actually <laughs> log two um Energy blasts are relatively slower because you can only shoot them out so fast. And when it comes to, oh, there's the ball. I told you guys, but he's hitting a different hitbox, so it's not gonna do anything. I'm but... using the big guy to hold the ball guy in place when he turned into his ball. By the way, uh, for those who'd like to know the reason why I ran around the room to fight instead of just running straight towards him going up, the Dragon Ball spawns on the opposite side of where you killed him. So, because I was on the right side, the Dragon Ball spawned left side, closer to the door. Which means I actually saved time by killing it there. Oh, didn't know that one. It was actually at a bad uh, spot, because the ball guy, I had to position it so the ball guy's ball wouldn't get in the way. I usually kill the ball guy right away, so I don't have to do that, but that was yeah. an example of me just having really bad timing. That includes all energy attacks, um, even some that don't require energy like goku's instant coming or uh, instant transmission that one is even though you punch something it's it's not using um strength it's using energy power or the power stat so that's why a lot of times it's still pretty bad to use so um which is the opposite of one instance in legacy of goku 2 where vegeta's energy punch actually takes in the stat of your strength and power and i believe it like has like this higher average system and that's why that punch is extremely strong um because it takes in both categories there are, i don't remember them being anything in this game even like goten's energy punch but still uses energy so like you wouldn't you still strength is still the fastest way but you can still punch faster and uh tasses will tell you this uh strength is also better because you have a higher chance to crit which causes more damage now, we already told you guys creating is bad in this game, but it does help with just killing enemies. Let's yeah, say you... like critting, critting an, uh, a random uh, mob 
in this game is actually not bad because most of the time it'll just one shot it and you can just move on. Yeah. Uh, it's specifically bosses where crit is a huge problem. But yeah, energy, you will not see energy blasts. You will not see like, um, you know, like stuff like that, unfortunately. Um, and a lot of them are slow. Like Trunks is flame Kamameha. Like, who came up with that idea? Um, but. And by the way, this just... only matters for the official release. For the alpha versions, those are the actual max amount. That is the actual way we play the game. We play it solely based on energy blast. And the reason why is in the alpha build of the game, you can't put points in, so your Kai Blast ends up being the only stat that really levels up. So, for example, Trunks' Fire Kamamiha is the second most damaging move in the game. While Goten's um, Energy Punch attack is the highest damage in the game possible. Ooh, wait a minute, we got loafers. That sounds cool, but uh, I, I prefer not log two stats. Thanks, I appreciate it. Um, there's a reason why Legacy Ooh, build two level is, grinding. Is, yeah, that's log. That's boost fury in a nutshell. That, so we are going to be leveling up to 240 for two. Oh my god! Yeah. And sneakers. Okay, we set. 140. 140 for two characters. Oh, there it is, you guys. Sneakers, everybody. I need everybody hands up in the chat. Let's go. The run is saved. He can now move faster than before. Like holy, like you, you guys will see the difference. You guys will be like, what the hell happened here? So this, so this is the, the thing about sneakers. Sneakers are an RNG drop that grant an enormous amount of movement speed. And, I'm, and, I'm, and when I mean enormous, I mean to the point where it's really difficult to control. There is actually, now that I have sneakers, that means I actually am going to have to be quiet for a few sections because I have to focus on exactly how I'm going to move. Because if I make a mistake, I will fall and have to go back and do it again. Oh, you're talking about the pyramid. Yep, that is the one portion that I'm going to have to actually focus on. So That's gonna... the only part that you could fall in. So, um, so the other thing, too, with sneakers that's really good for you guys, by the way, um, yeah, there really is, even Tassis can't figure out the drop rate. It's because there's so many items, by the way, you guys. There's a lot. There's Super Saiyan items. There's, like, there's, like, blue. There's, like, galactic items. There's weird. Uh, there's a bunch of items in this game that you will never see in, like, a lot of, like, runs. Um... But the reason why sneakers also helps is that we're also now hoping because it, it will help my soul uh, leveling up so you guys don't have to sit here for hours watching it uh if you can get like a 10 times or a 20 times uh armband armband specifically they will the sneakers will cancel out that speed drop uh because the higher the weight of gear uh the worse your speed becomes there is a hundred ton but you don't generally care about that um but the 10 and 20 ton will help in that sense and the sneakers will cancel it out and you'll still keep your speed um so as you can see he is running straight through the ninja hideout and he's not even in super saiyan so i'm glad that you guys you got the drop so you can kind of show why sneakers are why we, we we complain about this one item not showing up yeah um, if Mike Soul get Kazoo, uh, Mike Soul will have to retire because he will never get lucky again. So, um, but yeah, when it comes to this, if it's, I get it's Kazoo, of... I will use Kazoo just for the memes. Uh, any, 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 anybody can drop it in this chapter. Um, and that could, because it includes chapters because you weren't, you didn't have access to these areas before. So that's why the game was like, oh yeah, you have access to this now. Um, there's a kazoo item that is a, that is a, it was a funny item, but the, the kazoo, when you punch an enemy, it sounds like Majin Buu's, uh, anger sound. Um, so, it's one of those things where it helps with, you know, leveling, because you give it more XP, but it's, it's a funny item, because every time you punch, it's like, here. It's it's that it's that Majin Buu sound when he gets angry, um, but it also has a very unique effect that I don't think the developers realize they put into it. Is that uh, Kazoo is an XP item? You actually yeah, get angry, you actually get more XP per kill when using a Kazoo, and uh, so, I don't think that was intended. I think that was actually a side effect of them not paying attention to how they coded it. I, I feel like they had to intend that. Like, you can't just make an item with uh, XP to it. Like, that's you have to give an uh, an item like an ability 
so I feel like they did. Um, but they did, it just never tells you. It's a hidden. It's a hidden thing. It doesn't tell you that it's um uh, that it gives you XP. And fun fact, um, it has been confirmed using Kazoo on the final grind section is actually slower than using Ox King Hack. Because Ox King Hack gives you so much damage overall, you can kill things just too much, way much, way faster. I meant. Well, at that point, you're hoping you get like a ten times. Yeah, uh, 10 if you have a ten times, then oh. it, yeah, you don't really need it. But it's still a good item for a backup, just in case you don't have any of that. Right now, he can get a drop of a ten ton. Right now, um, yeah, I ten believe. ton spawn in this area. Actually, ten so ton spawn that's... any in these areas. Yeah. So any all the so like because we're in different chapters. So like the game thinks you have access now to pyramid, uh, train. You have access to the ninja hideout. You already did the ship. Uh, we have pilafs. You also have the, the the thieves hideout, which also can give you drops. So there's like, you know, like there's locations, and then of course the final one, which is Broly's Mountain, um, which will help kind of like give you chances. Um, and the reason why the most common drops here is because you have to punch the most enemies. Obviously, numbers and being that you punch more here because Goten has to level 100. So. Yep. Uh, I'm um, gonna do the Easter Easter egg, even though it's not a part of the uh, the run. So for those who don't know, if you kill this this box right here, you get the Goku hat. Goku hat allows you to gain one extra point per level up. It is not required by uh, speed run. Actually, I would recommend not getting it for the speed run because it doesn't give enough strength to actually matter. And like I said, we already reached the max amount of points we could put into strength anyway, so the bonus stats don't really mean anything either. So the reason why I'm, I I know Maxola, we've hit max uh, stats. What do you like to explain what that means? Is that the game won't let you uh, put in more stats than what your current level is. So if you're level 91, you cannot be level 100 stats or level 100 strength. But once you hit level 100, now you can be. That's why um, the Goku hat is not worth it unless you're trying to power up power. Um, but that's that's what he means by it's capped because it won't let you over extend her level um but yeah right at this rate we're pretty good uh we're pretty good mike still's killing a lot of extra ninjas uh i believe this is a good area better than pyramids and train so that's probably why yeah um, they're, they're, they're just like there's so many enemies on the way it's so much easier to get these guys and by the time you get to the thieves and um pilaf you generally should have already been level 100 type of thing. Peel off is probably the last part where you're going to be level 100 and um, where you get your last few levels. Yeah. So peel off, there's a lot of there's a lot of enemies in peel offs that will help you. Okay, so now we're going to go to Diablo Forest, and the easiest way I do this is I fly to West City, go up just a tiny bit, and then immediately go down in the desert. So now we're in Diablo Desert. Um, I'm going to do a, a, a kind of a cut scheme skip here. So we're going to ignore this rock. You're supposed to destroy this rock, and then the scientist is like, haha, I tricked you, and then a bunch of people are going to try to mug you, and you just one-shot them all. But you don't have to hit that rock. It's not even necessary whatsoever. So you can just run to the side and just ignore it. So Diablo Desert is just like a puzzle where it just constantly loops. Um... There's like a... We have a map that explains like which areas go which way. This is, to me, one of the fastest ma uh, pathings and for this desert is just to go left all the way until you get to that one rock, and then run up here. Break this I rock. I see your energy blasting them. Are you able to... Why are you energy blasting them? Because um, if you're in Super Saiyan, the energy punch actually consumes way too much to be used mm. that way. It's actually just easier to energy blast them. But yeah, when it comes to so right now it's just a big quest of Dragon Balls, and um, that's all really right now. There's not really too much kind of details. It's just a lot of fun just to go back and forth to these areas. Um, Goten and Trunks are having a comical time. This is actually this this is kind of like a, it, this actually didn't happen in the actual show. This is actually more of a reference to the, movie. Uh, the first uh, yeah the second Broly movie. Because uh, Goten and Trunks were the one finding Dragon Balls, and it's just a reference to them just finding them and goofing around the this, whole time. This is also my favorite level because of this train section. I love this song. This is my favorite song. 
So we're going to be jumping from rooftop to rooftop to get inside the to the front of the cart so we can jump into the train to go all the way to where those guys are with a Dragon Ball are. Again, this is really cool. So the it, it, the story is just goats and he needs the Dragon Ball and he has no like he's not doing this to be a hero. But on the process of getting the Dragon Ball, he's stopping an armed robbery on a train. So it's just, it's just like there's like other stuff happening in the world, and it's just kind of cool on how like they jump, you know, to help with, uh, you know, real world stuff from people getting robbed, you know. So, but yeah, when it comes to the whole thing, we're still fighting everybody because we still need to be level 100. The the door to Broly is that's that's kind of the goal, and then we don't need to level up anymore. Oh so. oh 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 oh! What is this? 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 What is? Sorry, I have to check. Two ton, I'll take it. Uh, I was gonna say that's probably two ton. I swear to God, it never jumps to ten ton for me. I'll take the two ton. So two two ton is still better. It's it's you know it's you know it's better if it was a ten, but you know you know it's it's it's. 10, well, I feel like it drops more in HFIL, but... It does. Uh, it has a higher spawn right there. That in Broly's but, area. So, oh, that makes. makes sense. Those are both level 100 areas. So, um, yeah. Um, it, it is true. Goku, what it, he did this stuff. That's what he did in Red Ribbon Army, remember? During so, Red, Red Ribbon Army, he was he was blowing everybody up. Didn't Like, he wasn't trying to save people. He was like, hey, you got my Dragon Ball. I need to do this. Sorry. So next up is Pyramids. So Pyramids, you were supposed to do this with Trunks, but we're going to use it with Goten because we have Sneakers. I will put it with Goten anyway because we still need to level up, but Sneakers. Okay, so this guy's going to bump us to the side and be like, uh, can you save my friends? I'll give you the Dragon Ball if you do all this. And you also need to be find the Pharaoh's helmet or whatever. So we're going to go save his friends in the Pyramid. So, there's a puzzle on the ground where you're supposed to, like, dodge all this. It's actually just faster to just face tank it and keep going forward. It does no damage, so it doesn't really matter. It's just a time stop, that's all. Yep. So but it in... takes more time trying to avoid the bricks, so you might as well just keep going. Yeah. Uh, in this thing, there's actually two sections we're just going to completely avoid because the developers just didn't think we would do this. Um, there's supposed to be like a bunch of switch puzzles if you go up to the right, and that's supposed to how you, that's supposedly how you get to the, the next guy who's trapped, but we're gonna go in the back way and just do the invisible puzzle. They did not consider that we would do this backwards, and they do it twice, and we, again, ignore the, the switch puzzles, because the switch puzzles take way too long, they can soft lock the game, they're a pain, they're just not worth doing it, so we're just gonna do this backwards. So is this the optimal movement to go to the guy in the first one and then come back here? Why don't you just go right from the entry? Uh, well, it, it's about the same either way, honestly. Okay. Because you still got to do it either way. I actually think the most optimal movement is to do that specific one last, because you have to go all the way out anyway. But it's not that big of a deal. It's maybe like a second faster. So we're going to have to hit these switches to unlock this door. So we're going to go through each area. And like I said, if you go up here, there's a, there's a bunch of switch puzzles that they expected you to do. Lucky for us, there's no switch in the switch puzzles. There's one at the end. So if we go backwards and go through the falling area instead, we can hit the switch there without having to do the switch puzzles, which saves us a crazy amount of time. You lose minutes in that room. So I'm going to have to be quiet and focus here, because this is actually really dangerous with sneakers. Oh, so you mind explaining this room? Uh, what, are you in, like, the ghost room? Yep. There's not much to explain. There's just a bunch of ghosts that are just kind of floating around, and you have to go in certain paths, obviously. You know, pick a path, and you saw him already hit the switch. Uh, there's another one that's actually, there's actually a switch in this room, um, but you, you just kind of have to know where to go. I mean, it's just kind of like that. And then uh, you want to go all the way to the bottom because there is an old man that you have to save still. So, you know, that's always fun. Uh, why Goten doesn't just fly in this room is beyond me. Um, you know, that would make it too easy. Uh, we have to run around 
like we're just you know got no place to be in this game but hey you know goten and trunks like to play around so so that explains go tanks yeah so um the reason why i said this room is scary is that you can fall off at any point and if you fall off you have to go all the way back Max just doesn't get good, you guys. That's all. It's not also, that we got the it's good fall easy. pattern, by the way. We we RNG and got the good fall pattern. And with sneakers, it's really terrifying that room because you're moving so fast. Like I said, it's hard to control sometimes. So you could easily slide off the edge and then have to go all the way back up again to to do that puzzle again. It's funny you don't actually have to. I mean, you can run; it's faster. But if you walk, your your actually your walk speed is actually faster than some some running speed without sneakers, so don't feel like you have to run all the time. Yeah, but if you have sneakers, like I said, even walking is kind of scary. I don't know. I've done it a million, a million times myself, but I think I'm just, you know, a good speed runner. You know, you guys gotta understand my oh, soul. Okay, I get you. okay, mister, I'm good at speed running. <laughs> hey, you know, that's how, that's how it be, man. You know, you just gotta get good sometimes. But yeah, we, uh, we got the armor piece and the ox king helmet. Mike still kind of explain ox king helmet. It's just a, it's one of the better items that you get in the game for stats. So you guys already seen, um, you guys kind of already seen like what the stats do. So you guys kind of already kind of know what, what we're talking about. The ox king gives you way better strength and the armor piece obviously gives you better endurance. So it's definitely one of those ending game items uh, that you don't want to rely on. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> RNG. So, the less RNG in a speed run, the better. So, and now that we saved all the old man, we get the Dragon Ball, and uh, I guess the clones get to walk away. I guess you know, clones, uh, you know, whatever you want to call them. So, <clears throat> the researchers. It, I mean, they're still clones. They all look the same. Fair enough. I'm not gonna cancel. I'm not gonna cancel for that because they look the same. Crap. Uh, Pilaf is next. Pilaf is... <laughs> I love how... The... I do love how the, uh, the, the developers keep putting Pilaf in these games. Uh, it cracks me up uh, because they make a reference that Pilaf is still trying to become the emperor of the monster the Pilaf. That's crazy. Um, but, yeah. Um, funny enough, we do get another speed item here. So, um, uh, how it, it works... Are you not going to get in Pilaf's gloves? No, a speed item. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you get the off gloves. I thought you were talking about the uh, shoes that are here. No, I didn't even know there was shoes here. Yeah, um, it's in the underground P-Love's... tunnel. No, no, no. Speed love... peel off gloves for some reason gives you faster speed movement too, which is weird. Oh, by but the I... way, uh, I... I don't want to cut you off. I want to. Uh, if y'all just saw that two giant enemies bounced off of each other and we're doing like uh, infinite damage thing, that is a glitch in this game. We don't use it because we kill things too fast for it to even matter. Good. Some of them have a uh, half left. That's funny. I do like when video games re reference something else. Um, but yeah, you you can see why a lot of Dragon Ball fans like these games because it's just so nostalgic, obviously, and also kind of to a T on how the game feels to the story. So uh, Pilaf here is about to send out a robot against a Super Saiyan. Uh, I don't think he knows what a Super Saiyan is anymore, but hey, you know, gotta love Pilaf, right? So, Mike still is going to put on the good gear to make the fight go faster. Ox King is more important than the armor, but you like you saw the biggest jump if you kind of caught it. I get the menu was fast, um, but the jump was enormous on the Ox King helmet. So, um, it just makes it easier with the stupid robot. That's about it. Um, and you'll see it, these robots will come back as a different color later on. So... Yeah, um, that specific robot, you'll see it, but I won't kill it. I won't even waste my time with it. Yeah. It's not worth the time waste. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's, like, you can see how quick it is. I mean, you, you guys are seeing this quickness with, uh, with an actual, like, good, uh, sneaker run. That's actually really cool, um, because... I don't think I've ever, uh, out of all the games I've done, I've done this game... I went seven times in a marathon, and none of them have ever had sneaker. This is the first one that has sneakers. It's uh, it's just a lot of fun, and it's it's just really good at showcasing why, as as you can, obviously movement is big in speed runs, you know. So, but this the game, Ribbon Armor was always cool. So yeah, 
the legacy of Goku games are like even though movement is really important in most speed runs and pretty much all speed runs, the, it's, it's it's almost like the most important thing in these runs because you can save like several several minutes just from uh, having good movement and having good movement items. So next up right, is so we're gonna do this. This little, is my soul's favorite part of the game. Um, the pure I'm RNG part. Two. Yep. I'm gonna say two of them. I'm gonna say two, two airships. ships. I'm gonna say two ships. So Mike Soul yep. needs an airship Fuck. to get bandanas to show up. Sorry. Uh, this is a requirement in the game where he needs a bandana so that he can convince some thieves that he's also a thief. Uh, and they're, they are an RNG drop from an airship. You cannot get them from the submarine, unfortunately. But, uh, but yeah. Mike Soul has like a certain one that spawns in a certain location. So he will reload it so that he can get a consistent ship. Otherwise, you're just free roaming. You're just trying to guess where they're at. So, we used to have a map where every um, ship would spawn, and I chose specific. It was actually funny because at one time each runner had their own unique ship they would always go to, but this is the closest one to the next area. So that's that's two. So two was wrong. Also, Mike, so for the people, uh, fix your camera. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna have to fix it. Sorry, I have to sit back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it's like, it spawns in this area over here, and like I just said, I just gotta fly around until it kind of runs into my path. Uh, there, like I said, if I... It's kind of, it's kind of tough to find this thing sometimes. Because, like, it'll spawn in the same spot, but it will go in different directions. Which is why you So kinda... I was already wrong. I thought it was two ships, but three, yeah, I guess three. not. Oh, it's a third one? Yep. At least, it's, at least we got it, because Mike still thinks he's going to get infinitely stuck, but I feel like the drop rates are really good here. Um, well, to be fair, better, to but... be fair, I've spent uh, a run where I had 30 minutes just looking for Bandana, so I have uh, some experience in it not working for me. Okay, well, I've never experienced that or seen that in my life, so I don't know what Mike Soul was doing. I think he was just on the wrong chapter. I don't know. No, I was on um, the right chapter. No. It, it is a possibility where it just decides not to give it to you. So... That was actually the, the one part I was the most uh, the most scared of for this uh, run for this marathon was that I'd get the bandana 30 minute timer and then just have to sit here for 30 minutes just explaining how like this is just unfair. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, while you're at it, why don't you get a red snapper? I might as well at that point. At least I'll get the holy water. But, uh, this is, uh, I believe the last Dragon Ball. Um, no, second to last. Bro usually, because I, I, oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, that, I meant this one is the last one. I was going to say, this is the last one before the cutscene plays. Yeah. Um,. There's a, there's a cutscene that will make you go to the, the village that you need for the last one, which miraculously Goten drops the dragon radar in the village that has the, the dragon ball because it wasn't showing up on the on the radar for some reason. So, but yeah, um, what you guys will, and we will get to see the train music once again. Uh, I'm so glad they used that song for uh, Broly's Mountain. I swear to God. So. But yeah, it's um, it's 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 a it's it's a fun game. You can kind of see where they um, they filled up some stuff in the game for sure. But you know, it's it's there's a lot of stuff going on and just more uh, world exploring to it to kind of give you more information of the world of Dragon Ball. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to run down, and I'm going to switch to Goten. This is because eh, it's important because I stored Super Saiyan, so that way I automatically have Super Saiyan on Goten as soon as we start this area. That would be interesting if you could clip it straight to um, Broly, but you would I, I feel like we would be extremely underleveled, I feel like. Um, uh, I'm level 100, so I can just go straight to Broly without having really to kill anything. Uh, yeah, so here you're not going to see much punches. Uh, this is kind of where it also sucks because uh, this is also where like 10 sun and stuff can drop. There is new items that can drop in this area, but you will, unless you avoid, you know, like if you get punched, you want to punch them first to get them away from you, but you don't want to do any punching because it is slower. So, 
Um, but yeah, this is a jam, you guys. You know, hands up, everybody. Um, this bridge is, is out. Fun but fact. Doesn't fly. Fun fact for for specifically me running this game. This is where I all like normally get uh, kazoo. By the way. Which is strange because you don't do many punching here, so yeah. Like every time I've gotten kazoo, it's always been in this area. But I do know it spawns other places because I've tested it. But in runs, this is like the most common spot for me. Uh, I want to give Mike Soul a bit of credit here. He is actually doing really well without bonking. Uh, with sneakers, you can actually bonk quite a bit. So it's just one of those things where it's actually really good to have, you know, like he's he's doing a pretty good job actually. Not you know, just avoiding you know trying to take uh you don't take damage but you just don't you just bonk you end up stopping your movement you know um oh yeah this is where the world becomes where we got undead skeletons we got vampires we got thieves we got bombers uh we got um pirates i think that's hilarious uh i, th I think the developers went a little crazy and what kind of enemies showed up in this freaking mountain so um it's just uh it's just really funny with just the way that the game... Oh, that's right. I forgot the mummies. Um, but these are really high-level enemies, too. So they give actually pretty good XP. So Mike still doesn't have to... He can actually kill a few, like one or two. And he'll level up, which is cool, but also unfortunate because you want to avoid, you know, stopping. Um, but otherwise, we are on our way to Broly. That's probably the biggest thing in this area. Um, I can explain Broly before we get there, so you guys know what to expect. Um, Broly is... This is the second fight of Broly. This, obviously, the first one was different. Uh, this involves the volcano, which did... That actually did happen in the show, in the movie. So, here, you'll see, like, several, like, um, panels where you are supposed to get Broly to jump on top of you. And land on these panels so that he is burning alive and you just sit there and punch him but uh you are so high level in punching that you don't need to do that anymore so he just dies um you can be slow at it if you are slow at it he will jump in the air and it just you just have to wait so, so. there's also a, a weird thing with broly that um if you punch him and he's in a guard and he does it and then he'll jump he becomes immune to all damage until he jumps again. So we have as soon as I see him have his arms up, I immediately just wait it out. Because if I don't, it's just gonna be a nightmare trying to get him from to jump again. Luckily Broly. Oh, yeah, that's Broly, you guys. Yeah. Oh, get waited here. Ten? Yep, ten times. This is actually a great time. Yeah, has to, yeah. This is a great time a spot for ten done actually. Because uh, the game recognizes that this is a level one hundred area. Um, it's also the same as HFIL, so that's why 10 ton tends to drop. Um, uh, you like you may see 20, but that's very rare. There's a different like pool for that one. Um, but yeah, 10 is we are we are solid right now. We are definitely solid. We got sneakers, 10 ton, um, arm bands. By the way, I want to make sure clear arm bands. I've gotten sneakers before, and the game keeps dropping me 10 ton boots. Like I'm about to use these stupid crap. So. Uh, the fact that we got armbands is actually very important. This is like because... this is like unbelievably lucky for, and like I'm not stressing this enough. This is like crazy luck for a marathon. Mike still actually could PB you guys. Just saying, his PB is actually pretty terrible. So, dang. Um, but yeah, he still has to do movement and everything. So, um, you know, it's one of those things where. Um, but this is the last Dragon Ball, and we will get to the end of the chapter as soon as we leave the stage. So, which leads into the next longest chapter-ish. No. Um, which, it leads into, well, after that, it's like HFIL. HFIL is not the longest. Uh, the grind is after this. We don't do the grind. No, no, I was about, well, I don't count the grinds. I was about the, like, the levels. If you're going to count grinds, that's just cheats. Well, no, because that's literally the only thing you do in that chapter. Like, you're blocked out of I everything know, I was... else. Where are you going? Oh, uh, you're right. I completely... Mike don't... Soul did not get his Dragon Ball, you guys. I, I, I zoned out because I got into an argument with you. <laughs> Mike Soul is doing something else. I have no clue what he's doing, you guys. This is... The, this We are derailing from scheduled premises. 
Oh, now I gotta remember where this area is, too. Exactly, that's that's crazy. I got sidetracked explaining what was next, and then I, my mind went blank, because I was like, oh, I have it now, go. And I'm like, no, I don't have it. When you leave the stage, it automatically kicks you out. God yeah, dang. it kicked me this out. Is classic, this is classic Mike Soul. Oh my god, this is like this is why his speed runs are hilarious. And now he is so lost right now. This is like the one area I don't fly to, so it's like actually harder to remember. Like you automatically get you, thrown in here. You don't need to fly or even know where this place is located. The game just does everything for you. Because as soon as the chapter ends, as soon as uh, this is like, it's just like, all right, go straight to Bulma. Yep. There you go, guys. There's uh, there's your, there's your, you can clip that. Clip that so that way we have the blueprint for the marathon. Mike's soul messing up like usual. God damn it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the next part is obviously after the Dragon Ball uh, is, is the, everybody's favorite part, Super Saiyan 3. So that's usually like the big thing. Uh, the music's there. Gotta love the music. Uh, the fight uh, is pretty fun, actually. The f Mike still gets, he says he gets a little scared of it, but it actually can be fun with just kind of like bop and boo around. So I like to bop him uh, under Bobbity's invisible hitbox. That's so, always my favorite thing to do. So I'm so. gonna I'm gonna ask this in chat. Do you do you guys want to see a trick that doesn't save time but is the exact same thing, or do you just guys want to see this fight normal? Let will answer that question. Well, I'll go ahead and do the tricks. I don't even know. I don't know anything about no trick for the Super Saiyan Three. Transmission glitch. Oh, go ahead. I guess if you want to try to do that one, sure. It doesn't break anything, so. You want the swag points? All right, we're gonna do the swag. Oh, points. my boy Z Wing, what's up, man? Let's go. Yeah, let's uh, let's do it. Just don't soft lock. No, we're gonna do that in um um. No, we're, we're not do doing that. Boo. Please, no. We're, we're, so when Goku and Vegeta fight Super Boo, uh, that is when Mike Soul will do that. So yeah, because uh, I have no count. control if that happens or not. He does have control. Mike Soul has a skill. I think you guys need to know about. It's Mike an Soul. ability. Thank Mike you. Soul, Mike Soul has he has uh what's in a Pokemon? He has uh, a skill where he can soft lock things at will. He just has to do it, and it happens. So, so um, heads up. Um, uh, I'm gonna get, explain uh, that later. We're, we're not. We're gonna explain that way later. Uh, that's way far in the run. Um, but yeah, there's a. This, right now we're doing the fusion stuff, and there is a secret code that most people know because you probably bought the game informers. Uh, that just makes it so you get an, a fusion, uh, instantly. It's it's automatic. Uh, you don't actually have to put the encode, the code that Goku keeps telling you. Uh, there's one that always works, and um, thank goodness, because uh, if you were to do memory games in in a speed run, uh, I feel bad for you. Yeah, um, so we're gonna try to do the little swag trick here. It doesn't really save time, but it is just funny to do. So what, to do this trick, you need to have instant transmission on your bar already before you fly. So in this game, uh, Goku's supposed to fly in on the screen and talk to Boo and all them. But if I spam this here, catch it on this frame, grab the Boo, and instant transmission to the point and do damage at the start of the fight. So I've already hit, done damage to Boo at the, before the cutscene even started. He starts blocking too. Yep. He always goes into a block. It's actually kind of funny. And by the way, it is not faster to do it that way. Actually, it's got to be slower because you you stopped the game. Yep. Because of that one pause. Would that make him double ascended? Actually, fun fact, it's probably... Oh my probably... god, you launched in the wrong direction. I know, I'm, I'm kind of in a bad spot right now for the up and down strats here. That's fine, we're good. We're still fine. It would only be faster... Actually, fun fact, it would only be faster if you crit there. If you don't crit, it's not faster, and it's really not worth doing. It's just a funny thing you can do. Well, I guess if you crit them towards you, and then start yep. the fight, yep. <laughs> I yep. guess... But the direction he goes that... is random. 
Um, this is where Bobbity gets blown up by Boo because Boo is tired of being controlled. So that's always fun. Um, the next part is I don't understand why they put this in the game. Uh, you get to play as Hercule. I don't yeah, you get to take this fight as Super Saiyan. Yeah, I know that. That was something I did test a long time ago. Um. Oh yeah, to fly out the window. I was gonna explain that actually. Uh, once we got to the hyperbolic time chamber segment. But to explain, there is. Well, I mean, we kind of explained there's many glitches all over this game. There's nothing great game breaking. We can't like st skip straight to credits. I mean, I think there is, but we can't use it. Um. But the way the game works is that in Legacy of Goku 2, you can actually fly in the overworld as Super Saiyan, right? Right. Awesome. Because that's, you know, that seems realistic. That Trunks and them would, you know, fly as Super Saiyan. In Boo's Fury, something happened to the overworld map where they stopped doing that. You actually, you, you've seen it where he cancels out of Super Saiyan and then flies out, right? Well, the game is not, uh, apparently it does not show Super Saiyan, uh the sprites at all so it bugs out the game there is a way to do so because the game um gives you a chance right before the hyperbolic time chamber segment for goten and trunks to level up um it was like it, it it was a way for them to be like hey if you need to level up go ahead and level up that's fine come back uh and you sneak out the window well the window does not check if you're a super saiyan or not so it just lets you leave, and then you just fly around as missing no while you're out in the air. It, I don't think it's ever crashed anything, but it is kind of funny that the game does not have any sprites as Super Saiyan. And I think they did that. I, I believe they may have did that because they didn't want to make a sprite for every character, including Fusions and Super Saiyan 3. Um, so I think it's just kind of like a thing that they just were like, you know what? Let's just cancel Super Saiyan and have them fly out of it. But yeah, when it comes to that, it's always funny with the way the game is. Now, Janimba, this is the chapter I was referring to. HFIL is um, we're coming. We, I mean, we we got an, got a lot about it. We still got a lot of game left. But um, this is actually like the last area that we get to explore. Um, HFIL is kind of like the last one you get to like walk around, find enemies. You know, um, after that, it becomes a grind area, which is why we need the the ten ton. I'm about to order Taco Bell. Anybody want anything? Ah, uh, dude, I go like for some like those uh, chips and cheese, uh, quesadilla. Right. Yeah, I was gonna say I was gonna say chicken, some quesadilla. chicken quesadilla. Oh yeah, that's what I'm about. This is why we're friends, man. Dad and dude, Wendy's. Dude, I am like, when this run is over, I'm gonna go grab me one. Like, I am hungry now. Yeah, I I haven't eaten all day on purpose. I came back from the gym. Actually, you said come back. I was still I was still at the gym. It's like, all right, let me go. I was at the gym. I was like, uh, "All right, fine." Um. Um. But yeah, I mean, I'm trying. I gotta come back. I eat like Goku. You guys, it's really crazy. Uh, it's so true, empty. So true. I eat like Goku. I. I. But I don't train like Goku. So there's a problem. <laughs> um. But when it comes to the HFIL, uh, the segment's pretty straightforward. Not much kind of going on here. Uh, there's more puzzles. Uh, got a little puzzles, right? Kind of helps you kind of uh, speed run through the game, uh, makes it so that you kind of go at a pace. Uh, I guess I can explain that too. Janimba actually is randomly punching you in the game. Kind of cool, slightly annoying, because if you're trying to run a direction and the hitbox is in your way, uh, it makes it so that you can't go that way. You have to kind of go around it. But other than that, uh, this game, this section uses a lot more of Goku's instant transmission. Which I believe is probably the most that you've used since the entire game. Um, and you're on your way to go fight, uh, not fight, sorry, find Vegeta because you need his help to help uh, fight Janimba. Um, and at this point, he does, uh, Vegeta helps you because he does not know about your Super Saiyan 3 yet. So he's okay with you until Majin Buu, and then he realizes that you held back during his fight. And he's pissed off. So, um, but yeah, there's not much here. You're just gonna go there. Uh, this is where you kind of level up Vegeta on the way back. 
um, to get to level 100. And the cool thing is these guys, these guys have major XP. So even Goku, who's pretty high level right now, he's he's gaining his levels too, which is fine because he has to level to 140 anyways. So leveling up Goku does not lose time. You still need his levels anyways. So it doesn't it doesn't do anything. Uh, fun fact: there uh, is a skip there that is pure RNG based in that specific room with the spikes, where if you uh, in, if a if a zombie is in the spike, if you instant transmission into the zombie, the spike will hit you as soon as you land, and it will pull you out of the recoil spot, meaning that you will not go back to where you originally stood at. And like it's a, it's actually useful in other parts of this run if we were used to in the old route when we used to just run Goku through this. But we found out that it's just faster to do Vegeta here because you have to level him anyway. By the way, by running to that very far end, I can break that rock now. So it's loaded in. And this is called May Skip. This specific glitch saved us a ridiculous amount of time. Because going through this whole puzzle was like, what, two, three minutes? Something like that. Okay, first of all, I didn't know you could punch it. I just commonly hide it all the time. Yeah, you can punch it. As soon as you hit that loading zone, it automatically loads as a regular rock. That's funny, actually. Did not know that. Did not know. I don't think it's a glitch. I think it's just a. That's a sensory system that they didn't anticipate. But, um, because that's just that's just you walking. You didn't do anything. You didn't change anything in the game. Nope. I just um, walked into the loading zone and loaded in. I punch it, leave. But, uh, but yeah, that's the quickest way to do the maze. Otherwise, oh my god. There is the another things, skip I mean, that is also RNG, where if you instant transmission to a ghost and into a chest, there's a low chance that it will fling you all the way into a spike and then it will pull you out of instant transmission recovery. Yeah, if only. Um so right now we get to play as Hercule. Uh this is where Boo um uh gets mad about a dog. He saved a blind kid. Remember that you guys? You guys remember right? He saved a blind kid. That was fun. Um gave him human milk. That was funny. Uh I love comedy in Dragon Ball, I swear to God. Um, cured his blindness. But, yeah, like I said, he like, you know, uh, saved the, you know, got the blind kid, gave him human milk, and then took off. Left him trapped on a rock on a mountain the whole time. Crazy. Um, took his dog. <laughs> and then Hercule fights these guys, gets shot. And, uh, yeah, you know, life moves on, right? Uh, we're spoilers. We're not there yet. We're not on that but chapter yet. These guys are crazy to me. They saw Majin Buu blow up uh, cities. And they're just like, you know what? You know what I should do? I should I should piss off Majin Buu. That's what I should do. Like, these guys are, like, absolute, like, bananas. Like, I don't get them. Like, they were just... I don't understand. So these guys, um, as Ultra said, they are so much... Ooh, I need to be careful there. Um... There's so much XP that I'm gaining at least several levels per kill, and like now from killing three of them, I have 15 stat points to put in. This is kind of the section we use to catch Vegeta back up a little bit, and unfortunately, this will be the last section you level him up in. So, oh, we don't level up in blood cells. Oh, no, really? we do not level him up in blood cells, even though that's actually supposed to be where you're supposed to play him story-wise, casually. By the way, why is uh why do you got the uh the sh destruction of West City behind you? Like what what's the what's the occasion? Uh no reason. Hmm. We're not worried about that. Well, we're, yeah. we're worried about dealing with Boo right now. We'll worry about that later. I'm not I'm 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 a I'm a commentator. I'm I'm watching the stream just like everybody else. You know, just asking questions, you know, Maybe for Boo the people. Did it. You don't know. Uh Boo comes later on. Which somehow, I, I mean, story-wise, the future Trunks, like, future Trunks, like, Boo, Boo showed up seven years later. Trunks was alive seven years later, so I don't get how come Boo showed up way late. Like, Bobberty was, like, on a missed schedule or something. Like, Bobberty went and took a, uh, a, a break and, like, missed his seven-year prophecy to come back and revive Majin Boo. Like, also, I like how 17 and 18 destroyed most of Earth in his future, but somehow clearly avoided uh, destruction of where Majin Buu was at. That's crazy. Yeah, because there's like a whole chapter that happens later on that explains that that did happen, it just happened later. Yeah, that's the same, like, yeah, that, that, I love those explanations. There's like the same explanation of why Frieza 
ne uh, never worked out in his life and somehow trained for a few months and is now stronger than any Super Saiyan. Yeah, because that makes sense. Gotta love Dragon Ball Z, guys. I love Dragon Ball Z. I mean, I know I sound, you know, you know, cynical over here, but, uh, you know, I love punching things and going Super Saiyan too. I love punching things and yelling as loud as I can. Funny story about going yelling as loud as I can. I think I was on my way to high school one time. Uh, yeah, I was in high school and I, cause I walked to school and I, I had just saw Super Saiyan 3 and I remember because, OK, so uh, back in the day, you only had CDs and uh, CD players. Uh, and I remember uh, having uh, the scene where Goku uh, goes Super Saiyan on the GBA, so you can connect the headphones in the SP. And I would listen to it on the way to, uh, to school, and I would scream trying to go Super and I threw up on the way to school. Nice. I screamed. I tried to, like, duplicate Super Saiyan 3 scream. And So there's a funny uh, little Easter egg here that the creators put into this specific scene. Um of uh, Gogeta, where when they fuse, what's gonna happen is Vegeta's gonna be Super Saiyan, and Goku's not is gonna turn back to normal, implying that Vegeta can only be as strong as Goku in Super Saiyan. I, I never thought of it that way. I always thought because he died, he got punched by Janimba as Super Saiyan, so the game remembered that he was Super Saiyan, was like, okay, here you go, here, here's your character. Yeah, so watch, he's gonna go out of Super Saiyan so that Vegeta can fuse. Because <laughs> remember, Goku was Super Saiyan before this scene triggered, so there was really no reason for him to go out of it. Yeah, I, 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 I laughed when I was, because I was a kid, like, I, oh man. I was not the kid with like the uh, like Naruto running. It was me with Super Saiyan. I was me and my brother. We were goofing on so many things. We you know we did Kamehameha so often. It was it was a it was at the brink of his you know like hysterical. I swear to God. We had we had uh, we had to actually this movie. We borrowed this movie from a friend. We watched this uh, uh, Fusion Reborn so many times. The disc stopped working. That's kind of funny. Um, he after that, which was kind of funny because he he had my uh, uh the name because it was a neighbor kid. He he got in uh, the movie um tree of uh the tree of might, and because we apparently ruined his CD, we didn't do anything to it. Um, he wouldn't let us watch tree of might. And I was like, oh. well, you didn't really mess out on that one, honestly. Uh, as a kid, I thought it was because uh, uh, I was, I was like, so much better. So this came out two years before Fusion Reborn. That can't be right, because how how would they have known Fusion Reborn? Because it story? was already released in Japan. Fusion Reborn came much later for us in the West. Oh, okay. Are the, are the DVDs the ones from the movie packs? Um... Yeah, a lot of stuff was made in the 90s. A lot of Dragon Ball Z was already over by the time it got to the West. You are correct on that one. The Reborn was made in 95, and it, um, it was dubbed in English back in 2006, a year later after, Dra after YouTube was alive. That's crazy. So now we're gonna do Gohan's training with the Great Ka the Grand Kai. Yeah, so this is Super Boo. This is the part we were talking about. Uh, Gohan, uh, gotta love the level forty or the four, uh, the, uh, the the points we get, but uh, unfortunately, just absolutely garbage for the run. The first time Fusion Reborn. That's probably that's actually probably true. Especially, I mean, it depends on like what game was made. Because if it was a Japanese game made, it may have shown. Because I, I think uh, like it depends like. Like games like back, like fighting games back in the day were terrible. So you know, like Fusion Re, uh, not Fusion, Re sorry, uh, like Final Bout. Like good lord, you guys. Well, they so. had a, they had a few good ones. They had like um, Super Super Sonic Warriors was pretty good for GBA. Um, Budokai was pretty decent. 
Tenkaichi was coming out, so it was still good. We broke uh, the sword. What about, what, about, what about your favorite one, uh, Taigetsu? All right, guys. Mike still has left the building, so um, you know what? Let's. Uh... You guys want to like get underneath Mike's old skin? Just mention Taiketsu, um, you know, and he's always up for you know, he's he's always up for chats. <laughs> no, no, we were talking about fighting games. Um. Nimba first showed him Boost Fury. That's really cool, actually. That's really cool. Cause, like, yeah, it, this is the first I, game he shows up in. And then the next one would be um, Tenkaichi, I think. So, yeah, that makes sense. So, because, like, when it comes to, yeah, 2006 um, and Boost Fury, which I can, you know, because, I mean, just because I'm looking at it, you know, Boost Fury release date was in 2004. So, yeah, exactly, you know, two years, almost actually, uh, roughly almost exactly two years. But, uh, 2004. So Boo's Fury was around for a long time. Um, it's, it's a fun game. Um, I, if you guys have never played it before, I would definitely give it a chance if you like Dragon Ball Z. Uh, not, I'm not supposed to speed running. Don't even speed run this game, you guys. Um, but uh, excuse you, do speed run this game. It's the easiest one to learn first, and I then move we... another ones. Mike Soul has told you guys how this game is dangerous. Oh, this is scary. This is scary. If it's scary, I think you're doing a terrible job of trying to convince people. I mean, I'm just doing a really good job, isn't it? But uh, if you like speedrunnings, it's a long game. Your first run will hit three hours because uh, you're trying to figure out things where you're trying to go. Um, and it'll, obviously, it'll be you're gonna... three hours, but I'm just good. To three hours is very generous for a first run. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like you know, if you're trying to you know speed run it, you'll you'll get lost and you'll you will die. So definitely save it certain places. Um, but when it comes to the game itself, it's a very fun game and it's very like true to like how certain things go in the story. So like right now we're in the super boost part, and this is all the go tank stuff. Um, it even includes the fact that go tanks explodes the entire um, uh, lookout, which I thought was interesting. Um, you know, it's just kind of cool with like certain things that they include. So, um, which is why me and Mike Soul were extremely excited about uh, Kakarot because it's just one of those things where it's like, finally, it doesn't always have to be about fighting games. So, um, uh, we wished another game was kind of like the way that Ka Kakarot was, but Sagas did not pan out the way it should have been. So, um, but yeah. It's funny how like Broly always shows up in these games, a lot of times. So uh, shout out to uh, Yoshio. He made Sagas an actual runnable game. So him and Legends, V Legends made that game runnable because it used to not be. It used to be the nightmare, my nightmares, because of how bad it was. Burning attack. Burn. No, you don't get to attack. You just hear burning, 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 and then the attack. Oh yeah, this is um, my favorite part in the show, where Gotenks are in Super Saiyan 3. Uh, at least it's better than pointy ears, just saying. So, um, like, this was, this was like an epitome of a child who has immense power. Like, think of Kid Goku. That's the best. Think of Kid Goku, and if he was as, as dumb-witted and as goofy as he was back then with Super Saiyan 3, they perfectly emulated that as Gotenks. Like, that's how I see it. It was crazy. Like, I love how, like, it's just goofy nature. Uh, by the way, uh, Mike Soul's, uh, the, the Crash Lookout actually reviews, reveals uh, collectible. You actually fly to the left and you get a collectible. Yep. So, yeah. It's actually one of the collectibles you can completely miss. Yes, because you cannot get that collectible ever again. Okay, time for the worst part of the game, boys.
Um, yeah, the music is always crazy. Like I, I told, like I said, I want you guys. You guys have listened to it long enough now. Like what? Like do you guys think Who's Fury has better music? Because this, these are, this is on the GBA. That's crazy. Like I, I think this, and I'm also biased. Uh, Mega Man Battle Network has like some of the craziest tunes. I feel like with the way that um, uh, a lot of the stuff happens for the the old GBA system. Oh my god! So like, because the way that the company worked is they took the actual music from Bruce Faulkner and like morphed it into an actual like, song that they can actually play uh, in the game. The so it's, it's one of those. Sixteen better man. Yeah. So it's just you know it's it's really cool on how they turned it into this. Uh, and I'm talking about. And I, I want you guys to know this is 2004 technology. Yeah, some of you guys probably weren't even born. No. So it's like one of the, it's like 2004. Call them out, why don't you? I, I, I'm just saying. So 2004, like that's crazy. Like think of like old computers. Like they had like we got crazy cool things to get people to you know do you know SoundCloud and everything nowadays. But 2004 programs weren't like even close. So like it's uh, by the way. Uh, if if you guys have questions for Mike Soul, probably now is a good time to ask him because this is his favorite part. We got about a half hour of literally leveling up Gohan and Goku, and we don't have Super Saiyan for Gohan. Yeah, that's that because the that's actually double. That's actually it's not even just the strength he loses. He also loses speed. That's actually the most annoying part. Like that's so annoying. You can put like a 10 ton armband or something, and then it's just like, all right, well, I don't have sneakers, so Gohan is moving slower than, you know, Yamcha over here. Yeah, so like, the the negatives to Mystic Gohan is that now Super Saiyan is completely locked out for me for the rest of this game. Yeah. And you don't get it back, by the way. Even after you beat the game, you don't get it back. No, you do not actually. There is no form that Gohan will make it so that he can get a Super Saiyan back at all. Or um, because <clears throat> uh, his helmet broke, so he no longer can be a uh, Great Saiyan anymore. Uh, it's a fun fact for the Alpha run of this game. You do the try to do the story mode for Alpha run. This is actually the scariest part of the run with Gohan, because. Um, Mystic Gohan did give you some buffs, but because you don't get to use stat points, your stats are so bad that anything can one-shot you. Actually, if I remember correctly, when I last did last time I did the alpha, the Gohan grind by itself is an hour long by almost an hour long by itself. Now, you're already seeing how much damage these guys are doing alone. Imagine just one-shotting. Uh, please tell me it's not what I think it is. Yep, it is. Well, Ultra... I hope you didn't see Damn that. Damn it! I did. <laughs> I told you I hate I hate the boots, you guys. If I get the armbands, it'll I won't use the boots. But if I have the boots, I'll use them. You can use a hundred time a hundred gear hundred times gear at one thirty. So once we get to one, oh, is it one thirty? Yeah, it's one thirty. I thought it was one thirty two. It might be. I know it's like one thirty something. Maybe it's probably one thirty two. I barely ever see them, so. Which is like you would think, like oh, like he already got the ten ton. Like how how much of a benefit is it gonna work? Well, the la for some reason, once you hit the like level one thirty in this area, your XP like starts to tank for some dumb reason. Oh, it's so, thirty one like, for boots and one thirty one for armbands. See, I'm so used to seeing the armbands uh... and not the boots. That's why. So for those nine levels, this the, the 100 ton is going to be helpful for both the Gohan and Goku. Unfortunately, it is the boots. If it was armbands, uh, the, the sneakers would have canceled out the speed loss. The 100 ton actually um, has like the biggest speed degree. Like I, uh, I think it's 
that one or the 200 isn't there two, the 200 yeah. one i think is the one that gives you uh zero speed yeah like it's a it, it, it's like you are moving like like slower than a turtle you it's absolutely crazy. need super saiyan for 200 and higher Still armor. So Gohan's grind isn't the worst, Goku's is the scariest one for actual 80% for the regular game, while it's the reverse for the alpha build run. Because luckily for us, Goku actually has good abilities. So we're going to make N up to 100, and then we're going to stop, because we don't need anything past 100. Uh, we'll switch these to 100 tons, and this will be an example of how slow I'm actually going now. <clears throat> yeah, it's crazy. But you can see his levels will start to go up here. Like, it'll take, like, one or two enemies before he levels up, so it's, it's, it is... It is helpful to get this speedrun cooking. Because the faster you can get to like level 140, the faster you can just progress with the story. And getting both... By the way, yes, getting both to both of them does increase the XP game by a crazy amount. But for the speed loss, it's it may not be worth it overall. I, I, I disagree. It's the same... Cause for, they Go, say this, for, Gohan, this, uh, for Gohan, it's not. Goku, it is. Because Gohan doesn't have a way to re recoup the speed, while Goku does true but for me it's the same thing as like so because i know um people say that in the level two speed run i would i told you guys about how uh the, the hyperbolic time chamber segment in cell when trunks and vegeta come out uh when it goes super saiyan they put down the speed uh, debuff so that you get the huge strength but to me as long as you can progress forward yeah you are running slower but as long as you're getting those levels to get it so because the biggest thing is the levels as long as you can get those levels kill the enemies faster the faster the enemies die the faster you can just move forward i mean as soon as they die you get the levels you can take off the boots and then just move forward um but that's just i mean that's how i always see it i get it the movement is terrible to get to the next enemy but most of them and most of the time well, you enemies lose all your time because you. of the movement because you're killing these things fast enough really fast enough for it to matter and um the, the transition to screen by screen will lose you most of your time save you would have gotten from both boots for Gohan. Oh, yeah. If you got sneakers and armbands, I mean, that would have just canceled out. That would have been faster for sure. Alright, so now we're going to do the Gohan versus the Trunks of Super Boo fight. Um, nothing really particular special about this fight. It's just like most of the other boss fights. But this will be the last time we play Gohan. That is the main difference. Alright, say goodbye to Gohan, guys. That's, that's, that's the end of Gohan for the rest of the game. That's also the end of Goten and Trunks, too, because we won't be playing them either. Listen, Vegeta, I gotta figure. I've I found a, I figured a way to kill or to defeat Majibu. Was it saving your son? No. Or use the spirit bomb. What? I'll give you three reasons. One, that didn't work on me. Two, that didn't work on Frieza. 
And you didn't even bother to use it on sell. Well, I do it to work. But this time it will. <laughs> oh, that clip is so good. I like it because it's funny because Vegeta realizes that Gohan has like the greatest potential and is always frustrated that Gohan like kind of squanders it. But Goku has learned after Cell because there was that scene that Piccolo told Goku that Gohan does not like fighting like that. So Goku has learned and has accepted Gohan for who he is that he just does not like fighting. So he's not trying to push him to do something that he's like, yeah, he really doesn't want to do this anymore, you guys. That's also why he's so surprised in the boot arc when he comes in after the training. It was like, you're a completely different person. Yeah. So, like, when it comes to, like, the whole thing, it's just, it, it is, it is funny that Vegeta does sense, like, a certain, like, kind of an uncle aspect of, like, how he sees Gohan. Especially since, uh, you know, he used to beat the crap out of Gohan and Namek. So, I mean... You know. Okay, so this is when we're actually going to be start using Super Saiyan 3 for grinding. Because we want those bonus stats, we want that bonus speed. We want kind of everything we can here, because everything here hurts. Oh, Mike Soul's actually doing Super Saiyan 3 for you guys. Aw, he's so caring. Mike Soul never does Super Saiyan 3 in this area. Because it's risky as hell. You guys can kind of see how fast the Super Saiyan 3 bar is dropping. Oh, it refilled on its own, though. Yeah, again, it goes back to how I was saying it's like that glitch where sometimes it fills up, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why. So we got to get to level 140 for Goku as well, which will be the uh, final door, actually. Uh, the game actually tells you that, too. Um, and it will be the final door where Mike Soul will softlock against Super Boo. So get ready for that, you guys. This is also the hardest part of the run, by the way. He's, he's been saying that the entire run, you guys. Don't believe him anymore. Like, seriously, he's been saying that the entire run. This is the hardest part, Spovovich. This is the hardest part of this fight. This well, you know why I'm saying of... that, because I'm not going. I'm not doing safe strats here. I'm going to do the risky one. I don't have well, I mean... Lazarus Crystal anymore, either. I just realized that, too. Wait, when did you die? Way early on. Wait, I didn't see you die. What did you, like back at Gohan the during the during the bank, as a to show what Razzworth Crystal did? Oh my God, he got it and then used it on some random. Oh my gosh, the Somebody... go the the gold ball can hit you one hit. Um, if you have because if you're Goku, you have extremely high endurance. Usually, you can tank the hit uh, unless he crits you, which is actually a very common situation with that stupid thing. So. Um, he can crit you and one-shot you, and it, he's also one of those enemies that can hit you on the first frame, and there's not really anything you can do about it. But yeah, when it comes to Super Saiyan 3, you guys are kind of seeing what we were talking about. The drain on it makes him have to go in the menu too often, which is why it's not conducive to use it. Um, so it's just one of those things where it's like it helps just using regular Super Saiyan. I believe, Mike will correct me, I think the old, like the the power strength, by the way, is only plus five or something. Yeah, it's only plus so, five. So it's not like it's a huge jump. If it was, they may have used it more often. If there was a huge jump behind Super Saiyan three, it may have been better to use it, you know. But there isn't, unfortunately. So um, you do <laughs> if you are playing this game casually, uh, go ahead and level up Vegeta during uh, Boo's. Uh, uh, bloodstream um, part, uh, please do. But unfortunately, we are speedrun this game. Uh, we do not do anything with uh, Vegeta. We because Goku is extremely high level, 140. Uh, we use him for the Piccolo fight, and we use him for the Super Buu. Now, um, I'll explain that now. I may re explain it later. But right now, we do to fight Super Buu with Vegeta here in a moment after the door. In the inner world of Boo, are uh, you supposed to fight? You're supposed to fight Super Boo um, inside of his body, but you actually don't have to. There is a thing called Candy Clip, and to explain it in the most easiest way is if you guys know loading zones. Um, the way that the game works is there's a loading zone behind the door that's locked. I know, gotta love Rock Chicken, you guys. Um, there's a door that's locked. And Super Buu is so tall in the game 
that when he decides to eat you when you're in your candy form, because he turns into a candy, the game puts your hitbox in the loading zone and it just cuts to the next chapter. So the reason why you use Goku is for endurance and you don't need a level of Vegeta. So you just use it to fight the Piccolo and just move on with the game. You're not trying to level up. There is no more doors for Vegeta. Uh, it's just, you know, you're just coming to the end of the game. Um, but yeah, there's no big thing on Vegeta at all. Um, but you'll see some strats that we do to help Vegeta, so you'll, you'll, he'll be fine. So um, to emphasize more on what Ultra is saying here, uh, in this game specifically, um, loading zones take priority over everything including dying like you can die in a loading zone and you'll go into the next area before it actually triggers um that's actually one of the soft locks in the game where uh if you die going into a loading zone with a lazarus crystal you'll actually respawn behind the loading zone and get locked out completely it's actually kind of a weird thing that happens um uh another, but that is actually used like like he said inside of boo in the run but there is a bunch of other places that it can be used. For example, during the Janimba fight, I can technically instant transmission into the loading zone when he spawns one of his little punch arms and immediately go outside the area and go back to the area before. But doing this normally will either softlock the game or cause some weird visual effect. So for example, in Janimba, if you glitch out using the instant transmission into a loading zone, the whole screen just goes black, and you can't un you can't undo it until you re reload the game. It doesn't skip anything because you still have to go back and fight. Um, for Kid Boo, you can actually glitch into the shop area early. Downside is you soft lock the game because there's no way out of there that specific room until after you beat Kid Boo. So it can be used in a bunch of ways. Uh, it used to be a part of the route where we used it a lot more. But um, right now I'm not to focus. This is the scariest part of this level grind. So I'm going to ex I'm going to expect Mike still get crit the first time you guys. Um, but this is the this is like this is the joke. This is, you can see Mike still save. This is the first time he saves um, because of how strenuous. <laughs> How strenuous this guy, uh, this stupid golden old ball is. Um, we already explained it. He can crit you. Like, look at that. He can. Goku has extremely high endurance. That's one thing that's going for him. Um, but if he crits you, that will. That endurance is not going to save you. That one crit could. Uh, two crits and a. Uh, one crit and one normal punch in a row is an instant death. So. And he can do three um, punches in a row immediately. And. This is kind of like what I was explaining earlier. I know I talked about this earlier. The way, as you can see, Goku, uh, Mike Soul is getting closer to the ball. And there's sometimes you see him getting punched far too early, right? This is what I was talking about. The game reads on every frame when you're in range, if it should hit you or not. And there's times where it will hit you the first frame you enter its its range. And that's unfortunate. That's just That's just random. Um, and then there's other times where it will just ignore you every frame as you like run past it, run through it. Um, that's why if you get close enough, the game will be like, oh, well, you know, fine. You know, oh, the first frame, Goku's in my face, pow. So it's just one of those things where it's just annoying because uh, unfortunately their swing is a little bit wider. So like they can hit you and everything. That's why I feel like that's why uh, I, I see Mike Soul doing it too. This is why I kind of come from the underneath belly. Like, we don't come straight at it. Like, I, it, there's some kind of weird thing. Like, if we come from underneath it or something, it's it's different. I can't, I, I can't describe it. But, yeah, you can kind of see why it's it's scary. And he has the same physics as the other ones. If he punches you three times, he turns into a ball. And now you got to reset the room. Because now it takes too long to hit him. So, but, yeah. We're already at low, uh, because of the uh, because of the XP and everything. We're we're at 137 already, so you can see why Goku is relatively fast at leveling up because of this ball, the XP he has, and Super Saiyan. That's why no one really gets mad at Goku. It's mostly Gohan that's annoying 
because of this whole like the way it was segmented off. Yeah, Gohan has no access to this this ball guy, which gives uncrazy amount of XP. This ball guy, he doesn't have access to Super Saiyan, which gives him more power and strength. He doesn't have access to like uh like well the Super Saiyan also gives you speed benefits. So like it's just one of those things it's just a bunch of negatives for Gohan grinding. Now Max Solo is about to do his soft lucky guys. You guys are ready? Let's go. Mike Solo is about to soft lock. So to explain what I mean by that, I didn't explain the soft lock. Mike Solo explained that it's random because it is Rex really random. You can't actually force it. The way this fight works is that Vegeta's running around doing God knows what. But you as Goku instant transmission to knock Boo down to the ground. Vegeta comes in and whacks him. You gotta do it three times. Um, that's all you gotta do. There's no fight. There's no health bar. It's just do that three times. Each time you do it, there is a weird mechanic where Boo doesn't actually hit a wall and fall down. He just takes off off screen. And it lasts like 10 minutes or something. Like five minutes, actually. And Vegeta, he will actually... Boo will finally hit something. Vegeta takes off after him, which is another few minutes. We made it past it. We're good. And, and knocks him back. And as soon as Boo comes back and gets knocked into the wall, the, wall, the game crashes. Yeah, it'll cra it, it'll do two things. It'll either crash or you'll have to wait till Vegeta to fly all the way back, then crash. Yeah, it's still both the crash. It does. It, it, as soon as he hits the wall or Vegeta flies back, the game loses track of where Boo went, and is like, okay, I don't know where to put you guys anymore. Yeah, no, Mike Soul soft lock. Feels bad, man. Damn, I was hoping. This is my favorite. Everybody loves this part. I always like to do the uh, the finger move. Like yeah, this Sir, is the, this is I'll the be with you in a minute. This is the only time in the run where actual beam attacks can do damage, but we still don't do it because putting metal wall is still faster. Yeah. So this is the part where the game is like, hey, uh, Goku's level 140. Let's get Vegeta to that point. We're gonna tell the game no. We're gonna switch right back to Goku. Because Goku's a high enough level to where we can just ignore everything. We're gonna go Super Saiyan and then just run through this whole level. Because Goku's better. Yep. You know. Technically, he is better hey, for this. But okay, hey, Vegeta fans, he said it. If Vegeta said it, he agreed at the end of the show. So you know, hey, you know, that's that's just how it be. I should have done this. Would have been. This is what you would have been when you joined this. <laughs> <laughs> this was gonna be a whole Vegeta thread, a uh, hate thread, isn't it? Look, Vegeta fans piss me off, okay? I can tell. I'm sure the feeling's neutral at this point. And before you guys get on my back, I love Goku, but Goku's my favorite character, so I don't care. Mine's uh, Future Trunks and, or, or Ten Gohan. They're always been my favorites, which is why I like Log oh, 2 so much. Oh, yeah, classics. Yeah, classics, of course, yeah. So this is like one of the first few like tricks in this area. We'll do Kamehameha here, and if done correctly, and I was standing in the right spot, it would kill both of those two instantly, and then I can go hit the other one. Actually, fun fact, Vegeta does this section faster because he can do Final Flash that hits all three, but then he loses the rest of the time, all that possible time save everywhere else because of level ups. Yeah, so this is where the... Because that's the Saiyan gear, which helps with Super Saiyan. Yep. Or no, Super Saiyan has its own gear. Sorry, yep. the same gear helps with other things. You are correct. So, uh, which is actually a really, actually, it's a really good equipment. Actually, it actually gives like a really good endurance um, for the for the armor. Uh, the same gloves does really good for like power. Um, so it's it, it's actually really cool gear uh, for end game stuff. But you know, it doesn't do anything for the speed run. Yeah, because we're um, just we're too low level to wear it, unfortunately. So, uh, this is the Goten fight, you know, you have to fight Goten. I don't feel like doing it, so I'm just gonna skip it. Yeah, we just walk out of the room. Um, <laughs> uh, they did not, uh, do well with hitbox, or like, you know, locked, uh, invisible walls. Uh, yeah. In so the... Now, you gotta fight Piccolo, because it's the right side of the wall that they fixed. No, you they have did to not fight Gohan. 
not Piccolo. Oh, Gohan. Sorry. Yep, yeah, it was Gohan. Yeah. My bad. So, it, so <laughs> what they did is they put an invisible wall at the door entrances, but for some reason in this room, the the wall isn't all the way to the like isn't all fully blocking the way. So if you run to the very wall and then walk the wall, you'll always walk right past the wall, invisible wall. You are supposed to fight these guys, though, so... Yeah, like, casually, you're supposed to fight so, this. You're also supposed to fight this boss, but because uh, Ultra giving that away candy though. clip, yeah, I'm just going to skip this Even whole way, thing. I just explained it ahead. I just like, wanted to explain it so they saw... Because it happened so quickly. Oh, I missed it. Okay, come on. It happened so quickly. It Because you had to turn candy, you get Boo oh, to wow, stand up in the, the top spot. area. Yeah, he's... Damn, dude. Come on. Well, it usually happens quickly. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I, unfortunately, you know. he was just standing in a really bad area for me. I need him to, like, stand... Okay, this should... I think it's, like, a pixel upward. I think it's just yeah. we were off by, like, one... But he's, like, in the worst spot for me right now. Okay, come on. Candy, candy, candy. I kind of want him to come in at an angle if I can. At this point, I might have to... No, you got it. Come on. I mean, we got time. You could just show. I mean, it's not like it's a. Yeah, we're know. actually kind of farther ahead than I thought we would be. So I'm over here, and then I want him to catch me at that door. Oh my god. Usually I get this first try, so this is pretty interesting that he's not doing this to me right now. Okay, come on, Candy. Like, you want him on this side specifically, where you have time to get to the yeah. door. You can, you can kind of see his head kind of clip through the wall. Um, we'll so get that's it. why, and, I'm and it moves now. your hitbox, okay. it moves your hitbox upward, that's why it works. By the way, the easiest way to turn into candy, so go here, candy clip. Nice. Even though it took that long, it still saves way more time to do that, because there's like, after you beat him, there's like three cutscenes afterwards, we skip all of it because we go through that door. Yeah. So... That's what I was talking about earlier. Like I said, it happens so quickly. It's just your your hitbox moves into the loading zone because of Boo being so tall, and it just skips the whole fight and the cutscene. So yeah. you know, hey, Un unfortunately, now we're the uh, unfortunately, the that was my mistake. I played that wrong. Like I actually was given the candy clip really early, and I just didn't walk into the beam. So that's my fault. I guess I should have practiced Candy Clip a little bit more before to the marathon. <laughs> oh well, it's good. Yeah. It's fine. Usually, I mean, it happens. It, happens. it showed it off uh... and it explains like how many cutscenes you skip by doing that one that one trick, and it also ex shows you what I'm talking about how loading screens type type priority because he pulls you above him and you're holding up at the same time. It registers the cutscene before everything anything else. So now we're going to do the end portion of the game. We're going to fly here, and we're going to go ahead and deal with the Kid Boo portion. So Kid Boo's going to blow up the world. We're going to teleport, and then we're going to have a Vegeta fight, a Goku fight, and then another... No, a Goku fight, uh, two Vegeta... A uh, one Vegeta fight, and then two stall missions. The stall... The scariest fight's going to be the Vegeta fight. Um, there are safe strats to actually make that fight a lot easier because Vegeta is actually kitted pretty well at this point. But his level is so weak that he is like... He's, what, 40 levels below? No, yeah, 40 levels below. So yeah, like Kid Buu can... Be level 140 right now, right? Yeah. So, um, so Kid Buu can instant kill me if he does this two swing. So I've got to kind of pay attention. Uh, I'll let... Ultra here explain what I'm doing since he knows the strat pretty well. At least when I get to the Vegeta oh, portion. I was like, you talking about, um, well, I got yelled at by Max Soul saying something too early, so let me know when it's okay to talk about no, the Big ahead. Bang you stuff. Go ahead now. It's pretty much at that point anyway. So, um, so you, if I remember correctly, you fight Goku, you fight his Goku first because he wins rock, paper, scissors. Yep. And then, um, Goku is like, okay, I need to charge up Super Saiyan 3 again. And so Vegeta fights, and we all know how that fight goes. Well, again, Mike Soul, you, you guys already know. You guys see it for yourself. Go, Vegeta should not be level 80. He should be at least 140 for this fight. Uh, Majin Buu will kill him uh, pretty easily, too. Uh, you have some endurance uh, items and everything to help you survive. The best thing to do is to keep him stun locked. And the best way to do that, which thank God Vegeta has it, is his big bang attack. Um, you can actually have Boo stuck in the middle of the ball 
and go from one side of the screen all the way to the other and just keep wailing him the entire time and you can do that consistently um once it, it explodes boo will try to teleport out of it but you can get him back into it again and just keep wailing on him that's the biggest thing you want out of this because you can at least that way he does not move he does not teleport he does not clone himself he does not do any of the bull crap that Kid Buu does, which, by the way, Kid Buu is my favorite character. Um, Kid Buu does all of this and will, like, he already cloned himself, which is annoying. Um, so it's one of those things where you want to try to time it so that you can, as Vegeta, you can kill him faster. Because as soon as you can get it, then you're good. You're fine. Because this is the only part that matters. Because then there's uh, a few more Vegeta parts, but those are timed. And um, you will do the same trick... But there is a hiding place that you can hide in this level. So Boo will not find you, which is generally in the top left corner. Uh, Boo will not find you, and you can just sit there and wait out the timer. Uh, that's actually the, the biggest gimmick of this level, um, is just trying to get uh, it moved so that, uh, you know, your attacks just kill Boo faster. Okay, we made it past through. See, if you notice, you if you notice that I every time I took damage, I immediately sent to Bean. If he crits and I have any damage, I die. There is no ifs and and buts about it. If you saw, he critted me once when I was at full HP, and I lived with maybe 10 HP. Um, but I'm gonna say this right now. I prefer to fight Kid Buu as Vegeta versus Cell Junior's um, as Piccolo. So, just saying. True. So this is the next Goku fight. This one's like kind of whatever. It doesn't really matter. And this is the scene where Vegeta admits that Goku's better, Vegeta fans. So just saying, um, you know, hey, just calling it out. Um, this is also what I was talking about, like, at the start of the run, where Kid Buu's stats are set the same way your character is. So if... I thought, so if, I thought all bosses were like that, though. I thought all bosses... No, were there are a few that don't follow that rule, but most of them do. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is, like, if you did... Let's say you did, like, an all Kai-based uh, one, or a power-based one... His Kamehameha would, in fact, one-shot you almost indefinitely. Mm. That's why when you saw him do Kamehameha, it did literally no damage because all of our, atta our Kai attacks do no damage. And it's also why Strength is the better one overall because that means we don't have to worry about um, him doing Kamehameha or any of that because it doesn't really matter. So now I we have just have to wait the time. For his other blue forms? Yep. Yep, yep. I'm not getting it. I I think you you launched Boo the wrong direction. I sure did. <laughs> you, well, it doesn't you, matter. You, you it, want... Yeah, so there's actually a safe part here. So now that I've got them stuck, I'm going to walk with them over here. I'm going to walk up, and I'm going to walk over here. So now I'm kind of safe until the end of the timer. So, you yep. know, Vegeta's going to do a little and, dance because we ain't got nothing better to do. And listen to this music. Final. This 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 is a jam, by the way, you guys. A minute, it feels like an eternity. This is this is a cool jam. So once it hits one, I'm going to start running back. Hands up, everybody. I bonked, unfortunately, but it, you're supposed to run back to this little square right in front of that little crater, and it saves you a lot of time from this little fly section, but I guess because I bonked, I missed it. It's not a big deal. It's just a small time save. Yeah. All right, so that's part. That's one. So now we're gonna have to do it again. So this will be the second one. This is also when the dra uh, he's gonna do the spirit bomb. So for the spirit bomb, the spirit bomb is designed to actually la lag out the whole. I don't think it's designed that way. This meant to, but it lags the whole game. So what I'm gonna end up doing is as soon as I get control of Vegeta again, I'm going to immediately pause. What this is gonna do is it's gonna despawn the spirit bomb. And when it does that, the timer will go back to normal speed because the lag will disappear. This is also the number one spot we check to see if someone is cheating. Because if during the frames when the spirit bomb is on screen and there's no lag, that means they're using something that probably shouldn't be used. Because that means they're correct. it's correct. That. It. Now they know to avoid that. True. Alright, chat. I need, I need hands up in the chat. Any hand emote up? Uh, we have we got to have all the energy we can hands up everybody we need ever we need all the energy for the spirit bomb so 
So, I'm gonna go back, go straight to a pause, unpause, immediately go to up here. Back to the save area. Now we wait out a timer again. Yep. As so Goku's is raising, his, raising it like, uh, raising his hands like he just don't care. So this is the part where Vegeta is trying to call out to the Earth to get the power, but obviously remember, um, Majin Buu like, supposed to have died, but um, lost all his energy. So you know, um, yeah, it's just one of those things where here you're just trying to survive to get Goku time. Spirit bomb just flipped way too high. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it, it's in that. Uh, it's you know, if it was anything like uh, Planet Namek, it's in the you know. It's in the galaxy, you know? It's outside of uh, the, uh, the planet, so... I always thought the the, the, the spirit bomb that was against, used against Frieza was way bigger than the one that was used against Kid Buu, but hey, you know. But yeah, yeah, this is like the last timer. This is the last part of the game, by the way. Um, the ending is just a bit of cutscenes and then Goku saying his goodbyes to Kid Buu. Um, we will, uh, the time does end, um, when we enter Capsule Corp. And hit the yes. Um, yeah, so when we get to Capsule Corp, there is a door that we actually have to say yes to. So that's when the time happens. All right, yeah, boys. it's the one time it worked against DBZ. Yeah, I know, right? Well, it will, it, it will work this time. I'll give you three reasons. One, you used it, it on me. Okay, it didn't work. work. Two, you used it on you Frieza used it and it didn't Frieza, work. Frieza, it didn't work. And you didn't you bother, bother using, using it on Cell. Cell. Well, I know it didn't, wouldn't work. And I, I laugh at that Team Four Star because it, it was Vegeta that actually came. He's the one that was the that gave the idea about the Spirit Bomb. Goku's like, I don't think that's gonna work. Vegeta, I think I got an idea. Is it you should have saved your son? <laughs> that's that's a classic. Was it, I have a plan to beat Boo. Was it saving your son? So, even in the regular show, Goku and Vegeta explained that Kid Boo would have been easily handled by Mystic Gohan. Um, they explained it in like a very small detail that uh, Gohan would have been able to handle it. Um, but obviously you can't have that anymore after Cell, so, uh, Spirit Bomb is the next best thing, you know? The thing that's never worked. Yeah. <laughs> Except in movies, because apparently it works in movies. It always works in movies. Everything works in movies. Getting punched in the gut on a previous injury works in movies. Truth. Cell knows it, yeah. Well, I, mean, I guess Cell could learn the technique of Spirit Bomb. Um, if it implies anything on how the Spirit Bomb works, that one time that Gohan was able to rebound it because he had a pure heart or something, uh, he may not be able to use it, depending on how the Spirit Bomb works. Because the implication of Spirit Bomb, which is why Goku only can do it outside of Super Saiyan, is you're supposed to have it a pure of heart and no, like, anger or something that's why he seems to always do it outside of super saiyan um so like oh he did say it? okay i i don't remember but you know he he asked not, he didn't ask to be born dads so i mean hey you know that's just how it be sometimes but it didn't matter anyways because he got he got, he got killed by gohan by two punches um but yeah that's that's Dragon ball z boo's fear everybody um you know, hey, it's uh, it's a it's a fun game, especially casual. I'm always rooting to play to play it. Uh, if you're trying to speed run it, um, uh, message Mike Soul. You know, he'll help you out. Oh yeah, I'll um, get you what you need. I'll show you what to do to get started, and then from there on, hopefully you find some new stuff because uh, there's a lot of crazy stuff in this game. That yeah, has there's a lot of runners out that know that know more what's going on because um, you know, it's just it's just one of those things. So, and time. Nice. Good job. So chapter 12 doesn't matter. It's just all cutscenes. Then it goes straight into credits. And credit. post game. Yep. Yeah, but that's Boost Fury, everyone. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, if you have questions, don't be afraid to reach out. You know, it's it's uh, it's a long game. 
uh, you know, top runner. I think the world record is two hours and ten minutes now. Jesus Christ. Yeah, he, he uh, has some ungodly level movement. It's crazy. So, I mean, that's, you know... Holy cow, I remember back when you guys were trying to aim for 240. Um, but, yeah, that's... GG's gamers. GG's. All right, Glitch, what'd you Shout think? Shout out. Shout out to the loggers, dude. The boys. You guys did great. It's always an entertaining run when you two are on the mic. And you did a good job, Mike. That was a good run, man. This I is the... the by the way, this is the, this is the first marathon where we got almost all the RNG items we wanted. I know, dude. I noticed that. I was like, dude, he's going crazy. <laughs> it was so hype. But yeah, man, thank you guys so much. And good to see both of you. We always appreciate you guys at the event. The dream team never fails us. So thanks, Mike. <laughs> thanks, Ultra. Yep. Um, is there any last things you guys want to shout out or, you know, anything you guys want to mention before we head on to the next runners? Oh, yeah. So uh, there are a few things I do want to shout out. I do want to shout out the uh, people who have gone out of their way to contact the developers of this game to go ahead and get us alpha versions. Um, at some point, we will get the game to a point where they're runnable for a marathon and we'll have a marathon run of alpha version at some point um another shout out i want to throw out to is the anime speedrun community you guys have blossomed out of like I've, I've been in the community for anime speedrun for a very long time and since this the discord group and all of that has shown up anime games are ta are being taken a lot more serious and they're they're showing games that i couldn't even dream to have existed so y'all keep going on. Uh, if anyone in chat, and, and this is for all restreams, want to uh, pick up an anime game, go ahead and join the Discord and sh pick a game. Anyone from their communities will be glad to show you how the game works. Absolutely true, my man. And yeah, for everybody uh, who's just tuning in or has watched the whole run, follow these homies on Twitch, twitch.tv slash MikeSoul and slash UltraUberness. Both of these guys uh, stream quite often, and, you know, they pal around quite a bit on stream together as well. So, great content from the boys. Once again, thank you guys so much for being a part of the run. We're going to go ahead and get set up for Fireballa's Infinity Strash run at the ASF Hotel. So, thanks again, guys. Thank you. Later.